I would call in a meeting to order for the City Council meeting October 17, 2019. Madam Clerk, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Asbell? Present. Councilman Buddy? Present. Councilman Chatelaine? Present. Councilman Johnston? Present. Councilman Wheeler? Present. Mayor Bodier? Present. Police Chief Walker? Here. Fire Chief St. Cyr? Present. Finance Director Todd Tunion? Present. City Attorney Scott Stansberry? Present. Municipal Clerk Nicole Lee? Present. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, just real quick, um, we had an amazing event this week at the Night Out Against Crime that the Police Department put on at, the, uh, at um, St. Reader. And uh, we had a little table, and what we did was we had um, some children come up and color some pictures, and uh, that's what you'll see behind us. You know, I am all about bringing this community back together and, and all about community, period. And uh, it was just a great event for us to just sit there and get children involved and get children to ask questions, open up. Um, it really worked out well. And, uh, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I'd like to, if you don't mind, take a moment of silence just for all the people who have succumbed to breast cancer and the people who have battled it and won. So just for one moment, let's just take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so. All right, before we move to special presentations, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add proposed ordinance number 2019-30 to ordinances for introduction. Madam Clerk, please read the title only. An ordinance approving the resubdivision of 563 Randolph Avenue, Lot 7, Square 7, Royland Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Gilbert Kelly and Katori Incorporated, dated August 29, 2019, and 573 Randolph Avenue, Lot 8, Square 7, Royland Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Gilbert Kelly and Katori, dated August 29, 2019. Okay, do I have a motion to open for public motion. hearing? Motion. motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Chatelain. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. <laughs> Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance? No one coming forward to speak on this ordinance. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Asbill. Uh, public hearing is now closed. All in favor? Yes. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now closed. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add new business number four. Madam Clerk. It's a request to set out barricades on Magnolia Boulevard on October 31st from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. Okay. Do I have a motion to add, to amend the agenda to add Motions. new business? Motion by Councilman Johnson, second, second. by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Do, have, do we open this for public hearing because we're adding something? Do I have, to have a motion to open for public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Does anyone like to come speak about this event? No one coming to speak forward. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Chatelaine. All in favor? Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now closed. Madam Clerk. Special presentations. Number one, Mr. Billy North, District 7 School Board Member. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is it on? Testing? Yes, sir. Is it on? Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's a wonderful suit you have on, Mr. Bodie. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Only you can make that work. I'm telling you, it looks good. <laughs> but I want to thank you. I want to take much time. I have it written down, so I won't take much of your time. The council, Mr. Mayor, Chief in Chief, thank you so much uh, for allowing me to come here and report some of the things happening with our school system. And I'm going to read it. So I'll get through it very quickly. You guys are very patient, though. Uh, on behalf of our school system and our superintendent and board, I want to thank all of, my all of our neighbors that voted for the main millage that increased our teacher pay. To those of you that voted against the millage, all right, I promise that the money is going where we promised it would go. We're not redirecting or reallocating the money. We are, we are uh, trying to uh, gain the trust of our community. Our school board is presently changing the process of selecting insurance vendors 
We feel as though this will save the district almost $500,000 a year. We've begun to study our facilities, maintenance, and transportation costs to find the most cost-effective use of buildings and buses. We've created nine new K-8 schools and consolidated three schools to increase student retention, improve student outcomes, limit student transitions, and promote neighborhood schools. We're using a differentiated compensation model, meaning we're paying our teachers different, and we passed the parish-wide millage at 72% to increase educator pay for the first time in 10 years. We've launched and adopt a school program for the community to partner with and support individual schools, and so far we have made 48 m matches to date, and we just started that in January. Harahan Elementary has been adopted by the uh, Mid-City Lions Club in conjunction with the Kiwanis in order to implement the Rewards for Reading program. Rewards for Reading is for the first time in all of our elementary schools and for the first time at Harahan Elementary, over $2 million, $2 million worth of prizes will be given to kids for reading books. Hazel Park has implemented an elite gentleman club teaching young men civility, respect, and love for others. Sounds like a program we all may need to attend one Saturday morning, huh? And schools that Harahan students may be attending. And this is how our, our system has changed. We have elementary children that attend Harahan Elementary, Hazel Park, Airline Park, Rupel, and I'm probably forgetting one or two. Rupel's one of them, isn't it? That's right. Okay. Middle school, our middle school kids attend Riverdale Middle, Haynes, Patrick Taylor. Our high school kids attend Riverdale High, Haynes, and Patrick Taylor. And by the way, all three of those high schools or A schools. Also, so many other programs, ELL programs, new alternative school, new discipline model, master teacher program, and too many to even go over. And remember, all of these have been initiated since January. We're working very hard, our superintendent and our board, to gain the trust of our community. Thank you so much for your time, and God bless our hand. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. You, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to move the, uh, to amend the agenda to add um, Mr. John Big Ilg under special presentations. Second. And, and also, can we? Um, all right. All in, Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 All right. So I, I'd like to open for public hearing. Yep. All right. Moved. Uh, motion by Councilman Asbro, second by Johnson. Vote open for public hearing. No one coming to speak forth. Public hearing is not. Can I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Yeah. Motion by Councilman Asbro, second Thank by Councilman know. Johnson. Yeah. All right, and we're going to add Kirk. Kirk. Mm -hmm. yep. Move to add, amend the agenda to add Mr. Kirk Talbot, okay, uh, state senator board. elect. By Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Chatelaine to add state senator Kirk Talbot's right. comments. Right. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Do we have a motion open for public hearing? Motion. motion. Motion open for public hearing. Councilman Buddy, second by Councilman Chatelaine. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Five yeas. No one coming to speak forth on that. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Moved. Moved. All right, we have a motion by Councilman Chatelain, second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Five days, zero nays. Public hearing is now closed. Mr. Ilg, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you guys for having me tonight. Uh, I appreciate the help of the Harry and Council, the people uh, of this community, my family, and all my friends that got behind me in my race. Uh, I know by me being elected to this seat that me and Mr. Talbot can do a lot for this area. We are on the same page. We even dress alike in the same uniform. Uh, we are together for this area. It gives us a, in Harahan and River Ridge and Metairie a, a lot of clout. The fact that we will work together. We have spoken at length during the campaign, and now we've been on the phone. We've talked pretty much every day since then, but it gives us a lot of clout to deal with things like air quality in this area. You have a, a united voice with us, and uh, I look forward to working with this council, because this council is extremely open to, to uh, new ideas. Mr. North, back in the back, I've met with Billy a number of times. A big push on my agenda was education of our kids, not only in early childhood education, but for kids that aren't going to college, for kids that are looking to trade and skills to become electricians, mechanics, HVAC work. You need the employees. People don't bring the employees with them. They need an educated workforce to bring the business here. And I think there's a huge push in the state for most of the people I've talked to statewide that have called me that we're on the same page and we have the same agenda. And I think there's a lot that can be done in this state. And I told people when I was running for this office, I did it for a personal reason. I've got one son, he's 20 years old in college. Too many of our kids have left this state. We can't be a better state if our children don't live here. And I, 
I'm 53, I'm gonna be 53 years old, I'm doing this for the future. I'm looking 10, 15 years down the road and to see them successful and see this state successful. I appreciate you guys' time, I appreciate y'all's support, and I look to do a great job for this area, and I thank you guys very much for having me here tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council and members of uh, Citizens of Harry. And I uh, was proud to serve you 12 years in the House of Representatives. And I, I'm tickled to death and, and very honored that y'all would give me another four years uh, to do in the State Senate. Um, you know, we're going to have massive turnover in the House and the Senate. You know, uh, completely different ball game. Uh, maybe a new governor, maybe not. But uh, whichever governor wins, I know uh, Mr. Ilg and I will work with him to uh, bring as much capital outlay back to Harahan as we can. You, you know, know, things like are uh, <laughs> turning around better for the state. You know, we're running surpluses now, so it's, it's been, uh, unfortunately, you know, the last four years have been lean, but, but things are getting better. And, um, you know, we will work our hardest, and, you know, John and I get along very well, as well as uh, school board member, Mr. North. So we're gonna work as hard as we can to make sure we're all in sync and to make sure that we get as, uh, as much done for the people of Harahan and the people of this whole district as we can. I have a quick question for you. Not only do I support you, and I supported you pretty much every time you've ever run, but I need, I want you to just explain to us real fast massive turnover and what that means. Because I've supported you in this election from many levels. One, because we need that experience to stay. We need that, and you, you've been a voice for this city for a long time, and both of those things are important to me. So just explain to me massive turnover. Well, there's 105 members of the House of Representatives. We probably gonna have maybe 47 or 48 new members. So that's, that's a massive turnover. And the ones that are coming back, most of them have only served one term. In the Senate, we have 39 members. We're gonna have uh, maybe close to 20 new members in the Senate. And a lot of the ones that are, aren't new have only been there one term. Redistricting is happening in two years. You know, the census is in 2020. Redistricting is a massive ordeal. It's very important. It's very important that we all answer the census. But there's only five members of the House of Representatives that were, have ever been involved in the census, and maybe 10 that were ever involved, myself included, in the census 10 years ago. So, you know, that is redrawing every district. That is redrawing Bessie Board, Congressional, Legislature, um, you know, everything. So it's a, it's a huge deal. So there's a lot of turnover, but there's a lot of good people involved and a lot of uh, a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge, but I think change is good. You know, you, you really start with fresh ideas. And when I came in 12 years ago, we had 63 members of a of 105 member body that were new, and you know we we're fine. I, I think I think the turnover is not going to be a problem, but it is. You do lose a lot of institutional knowledge, but you get a lot of good fresh ideas as well. So, so State Representative Elect um, Ilg, you know, said that he's looking forward to working together with you, and that's how you know we're pushing to drive Harahan forward you know we're right. working together we, we work we work real hard and we expect you know we expect and we want and we would appreciate that same you know relationship with you guys I mean we're a team Harahan here and you guys with the way we look at it are now a part of team Harahan as far as we concerned you know and that's gonna be big and you know you will hear a lot from us so <laughs> be patient with us well we do and you know capital outlay applications are coming up and that's I know, right yes sir I, I know and we need some sewer infrastructure money that's back right. well we'll get on it you we'll got get it. on it thank you thank you appreciate it thank you thank you congratulations Mr. Mayor, move to amend the agenda to add proposed ordinance 2019 would it be 31, 31. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor by ordinances council. for introduction. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Will you finish, yeah. Jason? 3019? Sure. Proposed ordinance 2019 31, which it, what you have in front of you says 22. 22. We need to change, change that 31. number. Gotcha. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Asbill to add. Proposed ordinance number 2019-31 for first reading. We're all in favor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Five yeas, zero nays. Move to the public hearing. I have Who a motion seconded to that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll second. second. Got Johnson, it. Johnson, and let me read that uh, title real quick. <laughs> yeah, read the title. Yeah. I am going to get it. Oh, we got it. Never mind. We'll read the title. Yeah, yeah read the title, then we got to public right. hearing. Uh, proposed ordinance number 2019-31 is an ordinance amending the Harahan Code of Ordinances by the addition of Chapter 19, Harahan Regulatory Court, and related regulations and bylaws. Okay, do I have a motion open for public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Would anyone like to come speak for it? Thank you, Ms. Judy. 
not as quite as tall as Mr. Elk. Mm. <laughs> um, this is on the new, this is the old new ordinance for the nuisance ordinance, right? No, ma'am, it's for the regulatory court. Regulatory court. That's the regulatory court is for the nuisance ordinance, right? It's for the right, it's to, to, for the addition of chapter 19 to add a regulatory court to the city. With another attorney, another hearing officer? Well, right now we're just considering whether you want it added to the agenda or not. If because you'd like to comment is, on adding it to the agenda, we can do that. I understand that, but first reading, I understand that. Right. This is, was well, also taken over by the um, zoning board to study this one. Well, are y'all not gonna wait for them to, to make a hearing? Th this is for first reading, so they still have that opportunity. But what I'm doing is they've come back to me with some recommendations. The ordinance that was previously submitted has been changed. Uh -huh. It's been changed to the point where I think it's been changed too much to continue with that ordinance. So I'm withdrawing that ordinance tonight and adding this new version for first okay, reading. Okay, I was wondering why it wasn't on the agenda. Okay, that well, It is on the, okay. No, not 22. Not okay. Okay, do anyone like else come and speak? I, no one else come and speak on this? Do I have a motion, motion. to close public hearing? Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by, <coughs> second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yeah. 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 All right, now do I have a vote to add this to the agenda? Motion. Motion, motion. motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Asbill. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. 2019-31 is now added to the agenda for yeah. first reading. Yeah, your turn. And Mayor, one more thing. If I can Sweet make guy. a motion to add under number five for new business, the No Limits Playground second annual trunk or treat. Permission to grant for the trunk or treat to be held on Wednesday, October 30th at the Harahan Playground. Second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Johnson to add the No Limits Playground Wednesday, October 30th, 2019 from 6.30 to 8.30 trunk or treat. Right. Move to open the public hearing. All right, I have a, do we have a motion by Councilman Aswell, second by Councilman Johnson to open for public hearing? <laughs> no, one come, no one coming to speak forth. I'd like to close public hearing. Oh, you want to come up? Oh, we ain't closed it yet. Uh, All right. Move the no one coming to speak. I move the close motion. public hearing. Motion. motion by Councilman Johnson, second, second by Councilman Johnson. Wheeler. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. yeas, zero nays. All right. Motion to add trunk or treat to new business number five. five. Mm -hmm. um, yep. so I, have a, I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Asbill. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Second, by oh, second by Councilman Wheeler. Wheeler. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Five yeas, yeah. zero nays. Trunk or treat is now added to the agenda number five. Uh, Assistant business. Chief Moody, there will be an opportunity to come up and speak on the actual event at the end. Yes, sir. <laughs> I feel, I'm like an auctioneer up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'll slow it down. <laughs> it's Jim, they're trying to trip me up, man. Is it final chief's turn? Is it final chief's turn? Okay. Yeah, Madam Clerk, yeah, approval yeah. minutes? <laughs> no. no. My no, pleasure. Chief. Uh, chief's turn. Oh, sorry. Special presentation. <laughs> on. Slow down. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Viewing Public. Hey. Tim Walker, Harry, and Police Chief. First thing I'll do is I'll reiterate what was brought up last month at the council meeting when our city auditor and our city finance director was talking about the 2018 audit. I don't know if everybody heard what was said. I was sitting down and I don't think it was really made to where everybody could understand. The Harran Police Department, at the end of last year we found out, was under budget $78,779, almost $79,000. I mean, $79,000 that was appropriated to the police department by the council, but because we didn't receive financial information on a timely basis, we wound up giving it back to the city. I would say probably in the last four years, uh, probably gave back $200,000 that was needed for the department. So uh, thankfully now we're starting to get financial information on them that's up to date. But again, if you don't get the information on a regular basis, it's hard to keep track of where you're at and you're required to be under budget and within budget, and I try to do that. And again, it was about seventy-eight thousand dollars we turned back in last year to the city that we could have used for either overtime for our officers to help protect you or for equipment. I want to thank our officers, our full-time paid and our reserve non-paid officers. During the last couple of months, they've put in a lot of time with the uh, Little League World Champions. We handled the security for them back at the playground. We escorted them out to the parade on Veterans Highway. We also es escorted the St. Rita cheerleaders at the parade. There was also the um, Girls Little League World Series champ, and that, they were also involved with that. And we also helped with the firefighters uh, fundraiser at the gym. And as the mayor mentioned, that we had a nice time the other night at the Harrion Police Department Night Out Against Crime, and I thank the mayor and the council for attending and helping and participating with us. It's a really good annual event. Okay. We just notified today, October 26th, 
Saturday from 10 to 2, there's going to be a drug take back program with, in conjunction nationally with DEA, Drug and Fourth Administration. We'll be at the new Walgreens, 8225 Jefferson Highway, and also in the lobby at the police station. Also, we've got that drop box that's good 24 7 for your unwanted medications that you can drop in there. And Halloween's coming up. We're back in Imperial, Wood, Imperial Woods. We'll be out there again as in the past, and that's 16, 18 reserve police officers that are out there. We get between three and 4,000 participants, people from all around. Everybody's welcome, just behave yourself. Usually the biggest problem we have is lost kids. I suggest anytime you're out with young ones, put some kind of identification, contact information on them. I mean, at least they have the dog tags. That might be a bad idea for people to get or something that you can pin on their clothing that if they do get separated from you, there's a contact person that we can call on a phone number to come retrieve the child. And also, again, see something, say something, and please lock your vehicle. Thank you. Approval of minutes, reading of the minutes of the council meeting on September 19th. Okay, do I have a motion to dispense with reading of the minutes? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Approval of the minutes of the council meeting on September 19th. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Buddy, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Communications, reading of the minutes of the Board of Adjustments and Appeals meeting on May 15th. Okay, do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes from the Adjustment and Appeals? Motion. Move. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Asbill. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. <clears throat> Approval of the minutes of the Board of Adjustments and Appeals on May 15th. Okay, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion. Mm -hmm. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by? Mm -hmm. Second by Councilman Chatelaine. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like oh. to discuss it for a minute. Oh, Go ahead. No problem, the, uh, buddy. These are the, the minutes that one of the cases refers to stipulations uh, in the uh, appeals board ruling, and the stipulations have not been presented. Okay. So we can vote on it, but uh, I, I, it's incomplete. <coughs> Defer. Motion to defer. All right, we have you a motion want to defer, or do you want to proceed with the vote and vote it down and just get it off the agenda? I'm, I'm fine either way. Yeah. Well, there's a motion to defer. Motion to defer. Okay. I'll I'll I withdraw a motion to defer. Yep. So motion to defer is now being withdrawn. Motion to right. motion motion proceed vote. with the vote. Motion to proceed with the vote. All in favor? Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. So yay, yay. Nay. 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 So two yays, three nays. Um, As bill. Excuse me. What? Three days, two days. Huh? All right, so we, as we voting to proceed with the vote? That's what right. I thought. Okay, so we're right. motion to proceed yeah. with the vote. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Five days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, right. motion to approve? Gotcha. Yes. Now, now we're going to make it. We're gonna nay. Move. Right, so the motion to approve is going to be two. You yay or nay? I'm a nay. 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 So nay. five nays. Five nays. Okay. Five nays, zero yays. Minutes are not approved. Reading of the minutes of the appeals board on September 18th. Okay, do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the motion. minutes? Motion. motion by Councilman Johnson, second. second by Council Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Approval of the minutes of the appeals board on September 18th. Motion. Motion by Councilman Buddy, second by? Second. Second by Councilman Johnson, all in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Reading of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on October 20th. Okay, do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on October 20th? Motion by Councilman Johnson. Second by? Second. Councilman Second. Buddy, all in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Approval of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on October 20th. Okay, do I have a motion Vote. to approve? Motion by Councilman Buddy, second by Councilman Asbill. Yes. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Madam Clerk, resolutions? Resolutions and no resolutions right. and ordinances for approval. Proposed ordinance number 2019-14. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asbill and seconded by Councilman Buddy 
an ordinance to amend the City of Harahan Code of Ordinances to provide for the establishment of procedures, terms, and conditions managing the occupancy and use of public right-of-ways by providers of telecommunications services. Okay. Do we have a motion open for public hearing? Moved. Motion, a motion by Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. All right, no one coming to speak for it. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Moved. Uh, moved by, just say motion. Motion by Councilman Hasbill, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five years, zero nays. Public <laughs> hearing is now closed. Council discussion. So this is the ordinance regarding uh, public rights ways and um, uh, franchise agreements for those. And I'm going to ask that if there's no discussion, we proceed with the vote. Okay. No. Good. Good. Any discussion? No discussion. Very well. Discussion. Discussion. Okay. We have a motion to proceed with the vote. Second. All right. Second by Councilman Johnson. We're proceeding with the vote. That's right. Okay. The vote. All right. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance passes. Madam Clerk. All right. Proposed ordinance number 2019-17. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Wheeler and seconded by Councilman Buddy. An ordinance approving the resubdivision of 131 Oakland Avenue, lot 45A, block 2, Markham Heights subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Ronald Clement, dated April 5th, 2019. Okay, do I have a motion to pope open for public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman second. Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. This ordinance has been on the books for like four months now. It's been ridiculously delayed. This could have been an, an re administrative resub, and it wasn't. So these people have been totally backed up for no reason. Y'all need to get your act together. Ms. Judy, can I ask you a question? Can we do an administrative resub making one big lot to two smaller lots? Is that in my wheelhouse? Because um, Yes. With a, with a building across the two lines? Right. Across the property lines? Your public, uh, your regulatory director should have taken care of that, and he didn't. So don't talk to me about it. Talk to him. Okay, thank you. I don't believe we can. All right. Agree to disagree. Do I have a motion to put close public hearing? Motion. motion. Motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Buddy. Public hearing is now closed. Do I have some council discussion? No discussion. No discussion. No, no discussion. discussion. Oh, you, you discussion? Oh. All right. Do I have a motion to proceed with the vote? I, uh, just oh. one quick point. I would like to say, uh, I would like to thank the gentleman for being very patient with the city. Right. There were some issues that happened on the property or that happened with the, with the package, and we appreciate his patience, and we're ready to vote on it, I believe. Okay, do I have a motion to proceed with the vote? Motion. Oh. Motion by Councilman Buddy, second, second by Councilman Chatelaine. All in favor, we're, we're voting on this. Yes. yes. All yeah. right, all in favor? Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Five yeas, zero nays. Resub has been approved. Thank you. All right, proposed ordinance number 2019-22. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asville and seconded by Councilman Wheeler. An ordinance amending the Harahan <coughs> Code of Ordinances by the addition of Chapter 19, Harahan Regulatory Court, and related regulations and bylaws. Move to open the public hearing as you, oh, go ahead. I have a motion to open for public hearing by Councilman Asbill, second, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. 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 As you come up, if you're wishing to come up and speak on this, this is being withdrawn, which is going to be substituted for the one we had earlier. Right. Public we hearing is now open. Okay. So no one coming to speak forth in this ordinance. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion. All right. Motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five yeah. yeah. zero nays. Public hearing is now closed. Madam Clerk, please withdraw the ordinance. All right, ordinance has been withdrawn. Yes, sir. And that is ordinance number? 2019. 2019, 2019 20. dash, is that 17? 22. Oh, 22. 22. Okay, got it. All right. Proposed ordinance number 2019-24. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Wheeler and seconded by Councilman Asbill. An ordinance approving the rezoning of 6915 Jefferson Highway, Lot B1A, Tract C, Soniad Plantation Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Gilbert Kelly and Couture Incorporated, dated May 16, 2017. Move to open the public hearing. I have a motion by Councilman Asbill to open second. for public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Yay. Public hearing is now open. May Casanay, 46 Oak Avenue. <coughs> This property has been residential since the city was incorporated. However, 
through spot zoning, the city has been encroaching on residential neighborhoods throughout the city. This is just another instance of ruining a residential area. Another factor that should be discussed is the fact that this lot has a servitude that runs right through the middle of the property. Has anyone researched what the servitude is for or what will happen to it if the property is rezoned and a commercial building is built on it? It is my understanding that you cannot build on a servitude. Until this problem has been resolved, this property should not be rezoned. Michael Amedio, 409 Crescione, also chairman of planning and zoning. Uh, I believe that you're absolutely wrong, Ms. Kaznov. Uh, you also come up here and speak negatively about everything that, the, that wants to happen with this council and everything like that. It's, it's very, very, very exhausting. In fact, I think I would like to applaud Mr. Maroney himself for coming forward two years ago with trying to develop something else at this property. And then he had an overwhelming amount of citizens that came up and said they were against that. He withdrew that and being a good person that he is, and not money motivated, he decided to go back to the drawing books, do something else with the property, to where all the citizens, and he even got every single one of his neighbors to come to the planning and zoning meeting, which you didn't attend, which I didn't expect you to, because you just would have complained, but Mr. they all came. Mr. Medio, I'm sorry. please, please, yeah. thank you. So, they all came and spoke in favor of this. The servitude in which you speak of is cable and telephone, and what's gonna, and they can easily move that. That's not a problem. So. I look forward and hope that the council approves this because this man has been very, very patient and every single piece of property that he's developed has been wonderful and would be an asset to this city. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right, would anyone else like to come speak? Kevin Maroney, 99 Colonial. Uh, basically, I'm asking for the property to be uh, rezoned from residential to commercial. Uh, I'm going to be making an office plaza. All of y'all have the plan in hand. I've spoken to each one of my neighbors that are surrounding me, and all of them are in favor for what I'm going for. I'm not going to veer from the plan. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing, basically a professional plaza, and it's not going to have a lot of traffic coming in and out. It's just going to be, you know, your normal business hours. So the place will be, at the end of the day, just shut down. So I told the neighbors if they'd like to park, if they have, you know, get-togethers, family stuff, I'm even going to let the neighbors park on the property if they need to. So it's going to be very easy. It's not going to interrupt the neighborhood or make anything. Any, it's going to look a lot better than it does. There's going to obviously going to be a re, be a remodel of the existing structure. Absolutely, it's not is being it? torn down. We're not going on top of the floor, servitudes. Floor plan stays the same. Floor exterior plans, to building. Exterior to building. We might just make some minor changes, but y'all see everything there. It's uh, there's nothing big. We're not adding on, not additions, not going on top of the servitudes, anything like that. Y'all have any other questions? Thank you, for sir. Me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion, motion, motion by Councilman second. Buddy, second by Councilman, uh, motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero yeays. Yay. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, council discussion? Uh, well, oh, go ahead. I'll sorry. speak a little bit about this. Uh, when it came up about with the restaurant a while ago, uh, I was on the board. Uh, it came to me, and um, with restaurants, it's, it's a lot of up and down. It's a lot of unknown with restaurants, uh, business-wise and stuff like that. Um, and Mr. Maroney has tried to work with everybody. He, he came forth with a plan, and I waited for that plan. Made him wait for months and months until I was able to walk the, walk the neighborhood, and I discussed it with the, with the residents about the plan that he had in place, which would have protected the whole neighborhood. They still didn't want it, so I voted against it. Uh, this time around, I, he, he talked to me about this plan. Is he's going to have his own business here, along with a couple other people that are going to be in the location with him. I think it's a, it's a beautiful plan, and I'm going to be voting for it. Okay. Anyone else? Tom? Eric? No. I appreciate you coming back with a new drawing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Move to proceed with the vote. Uh, can I make one quick, quick yes. Sure. Um, where I disagree, uh, you know, I don't mean to disagree, but where I disagree with Ms. Um, Kazanay is that I think that, you know, our, we have commercial corridors, um, and that's Jefferson Highway and Hickory Avenue. And we that and we didn't it, we didn't design it this way. I believe the forefathers of Harahan designed Harahan that way, in order to supplement the community as it grew in residential space to where you weren't taxing your citizens heavily. That you can constantly rely on the 
the, the taxes and wealth bringing in from commercials such as tax dollars, even you know, I know they did no video poker, but you know, anything that could help this community. And I think that was the idea, and, uh, and that's why I've always been in favor of putting commercial on Jefferson Highway in Hickory. And, and, and I was on the council, and I was you know, very disappointed to lose uh, Duke LaCicero's uh, Cafe Giovanni that he was gonna open here. It was a, could have been a tremendous asset to the city. And just so you know, he's opened his restaurant on the North Shore, and it's a three week wait list to get in his place. It's unbelievable, and we, we lost that. And I don't wanna lose any more of jewels like that. And uh, so if I could vote for this, I would, absolutely. But thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to proceed with the vote. Motion. All in favor? Up, oh, motion by Councilman Johnson. Second. Second by Councilman Asbill. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Thank you, Mr. Maroney. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, make a motion for a five-minute recess. Okay, we have a motion for a five-minute recess Second. by Councilman Second. Asbill. Second by Councilman Johnson. All in Second. favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays, five-minute recess. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting back to order. Real quick, Madam Clerk, can I make a, um, can I have a, a, a point of personal privilege? Um, Carlo Ferreira and I have been working through the city for this past, for some time, Jesus, since we, we walked in January 1, looking at infrastructure problems and what causes them. And uh, he took a lot of time and effort to make a presentation on a back table here. So, you know, let's, if you can all take a look at it on the way out, and, and, and a lot of our sewer and infrastructure problems are actually, we're starting to learn a man-made. Uh, it's not, we, you know, it's, you have collapse, you have age, you have things like that, but, you know, we, our, our biggest challenge lately is finding things in the sewer and drainage lines, such as Nerf guns, um, paper, plaster. Um, recently, we found where two pools have recently been put in, and they have dumped their plaster into the drains, which have clogged the drains up completely. Um, and that is a finable offense, and we will prosecute it to the fullest, so please don't do it. And uh, again, on your way out tonight, and I'm going to ask our cameraman to... Uh, Take a picture of it so we can, you know, everybody at home can see some of the challenges that we're having. And uh, and again, we're we're open to any suggestions, all help. And just as the chief says, you know, I believe in say, see something, say something. Because if you catch somebody dumping cement in your drains, you're gonna have the same problem that we that the whole neighborhood's gonna have. So please, so thank you, and Madam Clerk, we can move with the agenda now. Thank you. On proposed ordinance number 2019-26, an ordinance approving the resubdivision of lots three and six, Colonial Center, and lot A2B, Sony Outer Chapatula's Plantation Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, and the creation of drainage, sewer, utility, and other servitudes, all pursuant to a plan made by Ronald Clement, dated 20, uh, July 24, 2019. Okay, do I have a motion to open for public hearing? Motion. Move. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman yeah. Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public right. hearing. Right. I'll second. Oh, I'm, I'll second. I'm sorry. That's right. So Councilman Johnson Who's second it? Okay. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay, motion. Who's it's Councilman Chatelain's ordinance. No, no, no. No, no. This is the 26. This is the resub. This is 26. This is the resub. This is the one they did administratively. 2019-26. Oh, you reading the 27 right now? No, 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 no. The 26 is is, oh, is resubdivided. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. You good? You good? Okay. So, do we have a motion to open for public hearing? Move. Motion. Motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Asbill. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. Anyone like to come forth and speak about proposed yes, ordinance 2019? Planning Dash 26. I'm sorry. Come on, you come to the podium, please. Thank you. Yeah. Has the Planning and Zoning oh, Board excuse me, approved? Would you please state your name? Judy Johnson. Thank you. Has Planning and Zoning Board approved this resubdivision? If I heard the case at all. Okay. Okay. We'll close public hearing and then we'll come back and comment. Okay. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Move. Motion, motion by Wait. Councilman. Up. Up. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Come on. Oh. Thank you for saying. So, thank you for throwing that hand up. Hey guys, Danny McCarran here to represent JW Colonial. 
Um, here tonight to ask for approval of these eight lots. Um, I'm sure there'll be some questions, so I'll step back from it. But the, the 20,000 foot view uh, that I've looked at this is that these lots are in cooperation with the city's request to convert the commercial along uh, Colonial there into residential. Um, I think all these lots meet the, the requirements for this area. And um, I do understand that planning and zoning, I believe, asked it to be deferred or tabled. And uh, if I'm correct on that, I believe they asked for that. Uh, they had questions. And uh, I'm here tonight to answer questions. Got all the pros here tonight to answer questions. And um, that's, the, uh, that's the long and the short of it. I'm just trying to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Let's make a motion to close Ms. public Ms. hearing. If Anybody we'll, else? Let them come back. If we can, I'd like to hear, hear from Mike, too. I'll if you don't mind, I'll speak about what would y'all discuss, if y'all discuss anything. Michael Amedio, 49 Crestione, also chairman of planning and zoning for the city of Harahan. Um, as far as the stuff that came in front of us for Colonial, what we found was we were waiting on a few answers, you know, from what I, from what I gathered at the moment of the meeting is that we were waiting to hear back. Dale Velez was telling me that my uh, vice chair was telling me that we, you know he had some questions that he needed to have answered by the city attorney and I don't think he heard back at that time and I think they were looking for clarification also one of the other members of the board was looking for clarification and I think that we found the answer like a couple of days after and that's what was like the resonating step of what caused the deferral so uh, Basically, that's where we're at, and I think there's a couple more things that, since it was being deferred, that that we want to hear some more stuff about, and we're we're currently working on getting that together, you know. So I had a few talks with the council and, and things like that. So thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. right. Motion to close the public hearing. Okay, second. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston, second by Councilman Asbill to close the public hearing. All in favor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. 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 Public hearing is now closed and. We'll go into a little council discussion. So the planning and zoning did defer this because they had questions like everyone said already. And some of the questions were legitimate questions, I think, regarding restrictions on the property on the future, you know, um, future resubdivision of the property and deed restrictions and building restrictions and those kinds of things. And um, it would be my view that we, um, I'm not ready to vote on this until we at least have a recommendation, whether it be a, a positive or a negative recommendation regarding the ordinance. I'm not ready to vote on this until we have that. But, I, but I'll, I'll leave that for somebody else to speak on as well. Councilman Now, no, no discussion? So, <coughs> the resubdivision as proposed by the developer leaves a substandard lot in lot three. We've had numerous discussions about that. And we understood that there was gonna be a change made to the request to extend developable lots down lot three facing on Colonial. If, if we were to approve it, we would have a substandard, we would be approving a resubdivision with a substandard lot. I can't even consider doing something like that, and I'm not sure uh, if anyone else could or would. So uh, that's my take on it. Um, just about either way, I was looking at the survey, and I understand you're talking about that 52 parcel. The way the lot lines, it actually is adding it on to the remaining A. A2B. A2B. So lot three was cut into, was proposed to be cut into eight lots, ranging one I think has got 100 feet wide, I think the majority of them are 70 foot. There is that 52 one, but if you look at the plot lines, the property lines, it's actually adding it on to the remaining parcel. It would, it's not its own lot, so it would not create a substandard lot. It's adding it on to the back of it, is the way I read the survey. I, so get clarification I, I agree with you to a point, okay. but I agree with Councilman Buddy, because you're going to take, and my understanding is where the retention ponds are, mm -hmm. they can't build in front of that. That's my understanding. So that leaves that 50-foot lot. 
substandard <coughs> for that area, 55 feet or whatever it was. Substandard for R1A. R1A minimum lot size is 60 feet. Right, but it's not a designated lot. Well, that's it's, that's the point. We're re, but they can't we're go re, here with rezoning nothing. something, yeah, and we're leaving a substandard lot. You've got you've got lot three, <coughs> and we're rezoning it, and it's gonna it's gonna leave a parcel that's a substandard lot. All right, I it, I'm gonna it's still can I? Of, it's still part of three. Councilman Bodie, can I can I ask yes. for a point yes, of personal privilege? I would like to ask um, Danny to come on up, and maybe if you guys don't mind, let's let's yes, get into I'm this discussion. Here. Very yes, sir. Yeah, yeah appreciate that. Um, whether it's a substandard lot or not, I'm not a planning and zoning guy. Yep, thank you kindly. What, what I can speak to is my intention. With the cameras on right here, nothing's getting built on that. It can't be built on that. There's a minimum size. Now, I, I, I'm not here to tell you what you're approving, not approved, but it's clearly labeled one through eight. There's no number on there. I'm asking for eight lots. It's, it's, there, there's no dece deception here. There's the camera. Here's me. There's nothing. It, it's, a, it's, it's plain as day, I think, that uh, uh, Haverhan asked this to be. They said, hey, look, uh, JW, can you make that not commercial? Uh, we, we want residential face and residential. Fair enough. Um, we, we came up with the, uh, the lots, complied with it. And that's it. Uh, my intention is to not build anything on that. Nothing will be built on that. There's a. And yes, sir, I hear you. But you're asking the council, without input from planning and zoning, to approve a resubdivision of a lot into eight lots that you could develop and one that you can't. Yes, sir. You're asking me to approve a substandard lot. It's not numbered, but it's a, it's remaining. It's out there. It's a substandard lot. So, yeah, could I ask? Uh, I I guess my my opinion is I, I don't think it's a substandard lot, but tell I might be wrong. <laughs> Good evening, evening. I'm Ed Suffren. I'm the real estate attorney for JW Colonial, the developer. Councilmember Wheeler did read the survey correctly. It's not actually a lot of record that. Uh, leftover parcel is being swept into the larger A2B1, and that becomes one large lot of record, all of which is residentially zoned. It's just one through eight. It's just one through eight that that is up right now. That extra part just goes right in. Mr. Suffren, where does that occur? Yes, yeah, so let me grab my exhibit. Please. Go ahead. So we're also resubdividing yes, the larger a, lot. I have a, this is the resubdivision plan. Reverse side is the rezoning plan. This is not a lot. There's a, a, a saving line there just to demonstrate where lot three, commercial lot three, extends to. But it's actually incorporated within A2B1, which is this larger remaining parcel. You can see here. But this is the point of beginning for lot A2B1. And likewise, for the rezoning, we rezone that parcel too. So the arrows on our plat for rezoning, we rezone the entirety of former lot three. Right, all That's to residential. All residential, yes, sir. So, you know, let me just sit here and tell you that. I'm having trouble comprehending the logic of what you're doing. If something's not being said. If, yeah, that, that, if, that's fine. I, if you hadn't asked the question of what the logic can I, is. Can I, I ask the direct question of, are you basically extending lot A to B, the 50 whatever feet, into lot 3? That's correct. Okay. That's what we Do we, should we put a clarification in here for that, just to make sure that everybody knows down the line? Should we put a clarification? Oh, I understand. I understand what it is. I'm just saying for, for other I, I people. I want to have, have these discussions. Have I want to have these discussions because we can legally sit here with all the council members and y'all and have these discussions. Right. I think the issue is planning and zoning, drainage, servitudes, 
you know, property drainage. I mean, right now our property drains to our ordinance says you're going to drain your property from the back to the front. I think some small discussions came up to where this property would drain from the front to the back with a drainage servitude in the back, possibly, because we're going to contain your water. That's why planning and zoning can't give us a recommendation because we have no guidelines to follow that. When we put that into our zoning ordinance, our zoning ordinance can't say, oh, lots one through eight drain to the back. We need that clarified. And um, we need to get that put into our ordinance. That's why we're waiting on our recommendation from planning and zoning to help us with that. The developers, it's the developer's responsibility for the sewer. You know, I don't want y'all to put eight lots, then y'all come back and say, we got eight lots. Where's my sewer tap? No, that's the developer's responsibility, and that's why we have a planning and zoning to give us a recommendation to buffer these things out. Um, I'm sitting there saying I'm in favor of the lots. That's not a problem. I want to follow the guidelines. I don't think today we're prepared to follow these guidelines. Um, so I propose the ordinance. I want everybody to have discussion, and we'll finish discussion and see where we're going to go once everybody has their discussions. You're the drainage expert, correct? Oh, yes, sir. My name is Tommy Buckle. I'm the civil engineer, DuPlantis Design Group. Um, we had designed the original subdivision that was approved uh, where the construction <laughs> of the lake is going. Um, and I want to address the sewer, the drainage, and the, and the water questions for you. While this is a public forum, I totally understand the procedural aspects of there's an order of which things have to happen. And so understand that this may have to be deferred until such time planning and zoning acts. I get that. But I want to answer your question while you've asked it. So well, we're in public and we can understand. All so, discuss. So the the there is a on on that plat there is a drainage servitude. There is a, there is a utility servitude that is located along the rear of that lot. The rear of those eight lots also shared with the the Blake lot. That drainage that utility that servitude has public drainage in it and public sewer in it. There is an existing 48-inch storm pipe that is at the rear of those eight lots that those eight lots will drain to, that that will drain back into the detention pond into the outfall. The, there is an existing sewer line that has already been installed with stubs for these eight residential lots to tie into. It also services the Blake, and it also services the other commercial lots that are along the front of Jefferson Highway. That was all been designed and previously approved by the city engineer, the previous ad administration engineer, and has been reevaluated by Myers engineers. Um, and that, that sewer lift station and that sewer system has been designed such that it is for full build out of the Blake, those eight lots, plus the commercial developments that are the commercial lots that are along the front. So if hopefully I've answered your question but, but and give you some assurance, but that is the reason why the servitudes are on there. I understand the procedural aspects that may have to take place, but the sewer and the storm have both been master planned within the original development and the availability is there for those lots at times homes are constructed to tie in. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Suffern, while you're up here, one of the, one of the other concerns was um, deed restrictions on future resubdivision of these eight lots. Um, and I think that's what would, that's one of the things that the planning and zoning was asking for. Has that been done? Um, it hasn't been done yet, but we anticipate that it will be done. And it's really premature to implement easements, covenants, and restrictions until we have lots. Uh, when you would file your easements, your subdivision plan is the exhibit. We do anticipate having that. And we would have all the accoutrements of a homeowners association. Everyone pays dues. They contribute to taking care of the stormwater management area. We have an architectural control committee. We establish minimum requirements for homes. Uh, you know, that's what we want. We're going to be developing other properties. It has to be top notch. I mean, that's what the developer is seeking. So is, I, it may be premature to file those, but can you can you forward those to the planning and zoning committee so that they can see them beforehand? Well, I mean, they're not drafted yet. Okay. Uh, we could pick a subdivision that everybody likes and perhaps uh, do that type of format. But how We've could already you, Mr. Suffern, how could you sell the lots? This is, this is an anticipation of selling lots. And if it's going to be tied into the things you just said, 
then those documents have to exist. We don't I'm, even. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm we, asking. We don't have lots don't, to don't sell. Don't, Step number one. But if this were approved tonight, yes, sir. you would have eight lots to sell. But none of the documents you've spoken about exist, so they would not go with the sale of those lots, would they? We would want to have easements, covenants, restrictions, restrictive covenants filed prior to the sale. And you would establish that you want everybody to know what they're buying into. Right, and, and, and I guess what we're wondering is why isn't that established now so the, the, this can be evaluated in full daylight with some certainty? I have never had a government agency ask for that up front. It's a private document driven by the developer, and it's for the benefit of the developer and the future homeowners. Yeah, I think we need that. We, we need your help with that because of the drainage and sewer issues. I mean, if we give you a lot and, and you don't have these issues put in place already, you could come back and say, no, I need sewer. You know, and you'd be looking at us to provide the sewer. We but, can't take a, a, a legal lot and say, we're not giving you sewer. The sewer is demonstrated on our subdivision plan, so approval of the plan approves the sewer servitude. And as Mr. Buckle said, the line's there. And drainage, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I believe that's what we depend on our planning and zoning committee can to I, bring that recommendation to us. Can I take a point of privilege for planning and zoning real quick? Come on, come over here, Mike, come over here. Oh, yeah. So we can go yeah, back. Mr. Suffren, don't we? <laughs> I, have, I have another question for yes, you. Sir. Oh. Mike Lemutio <laughs> again. Um, see, that's where some of it gets confusing for us because to argue that point, is that, well, somebody said for us to resubdivide Oakland that we just approved, well, we should demo the house that's on that lot now before we, appro before we approve the resub. But it would be a, a little bit ridiculous for us to ask a developer to demo a house before he's approved the resub to build the two houses that he wants to do. So as an investor, I could see where you'd be apprehensive. So you could argue both sides of that point. You know what I mean? And except these documents we're talking about, Mike, are the same documents that are going to be used to sell 80 to 100 lots. It's the subdivision. Y yes, I understand and, that. And while there's a sense of urgency to get these resubdivided, that sense of urgency <coughs> can only be because they want to sell them quickly. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm assuming that. But the documents that would allow you to sell them with what you've said you're going to do don't exist yet. So I don't think it's necessarily the cart before the horse. If these eight lots are going to be part of a, of a master subdivision plan, then those parts of the master subdivision plan have to be in place before you're selling the lots. So I, 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 again, I don't understand why they're not available. I guess from, from my limited experience compared to Mr. Suffren, you know, who's been doing this made a career out of this, you know, so I'm sure that you could speak in lengths about things that I only wish to know, you know what I mean? And we have a relatively new board, relatively new, um, and it's ever learning for us. This is, a, this is a big pie for us. And I know that we've tied them up for a long time. Uh, whose fault is it? I don't know, you know what I mean? But what I can say is that Every single person on that board who I've spoken to about that piece of property getting developed, they're not against the property getting developed. You know, their, mo their, their major concerns, you know, along with mine is drainage is going to be an asset to the community and, you know, where, where do we move forward, right? And so I think that I don't know if there's anything in front of you tonight that there's any kind of a give and take, you know what I mean? But I, I imagine that as chairman of the board, which may only be for another month or so after this, but, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> you know, I think that, it's that, the, that the planning and zoning board would be able to stomach whatever kind of decision that the council makes as long as, it, you know, as, long as it's not like a total you know, slap in the face to us, you know what I mean? But I understand that there's Time is of the essence, lost opportunity, 
which is basically, you know, loss of profits and things like that. And, you know, I don't want to get stuck with somebody else that may not develop something quite as nice, you know what I mean? So I think that in the city's best interest, as chairman of planning and zoning, I encourage the council to do what they can with what's in front of them, you know, uh, without, you know, throwing out the baby with the bathwater. If you will. Well, so. I, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to ask the developers. We have a planning and zoning meeting on November sixth, fifth. Sixth, sixth. I will check. I think it's the fifth. November fifth or sixth. It is November 6th. I'm going to ask the developers if we could get a, a couple of small meetings together with different people, planning and zoning members, maybe a couple of council members at a time, and we could resolve these drainage issues and a few issues. I believe we're all looking forward to move this project. Right. Um, I think if we could uh, move this in that route, I've, I think we all might be a little more happier in this situation here. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make a motion to defer this. Okay, before, you, before I accept your motion to defer, I want to Second. go on record saying one thing to Mr. Buckle, Mr. Suffern, Mr. McCarran, and because uh, I want this to be on TV and everyone to know it, and I've made my point well to them, and I understand how this works, and, and I know we have my philosophy and you have your philosophy, and, and I need you guys to understand that you're going to tie us in, you're going to tie what you got tied in right now to a failing infrastructure heading to the sewer plant. And we've asked, and, and I'm going to ask again and again and again for you guys to help us upgrade this, this infrastructure. Yeah, and because if we don't, it will only be a short matter of time before no one flushes their toilets there anymore. And I want that to be known in public because this is the first time I've very been very vocal about it because I've been out there. I've seen three sinkholes and three broken sewer lines and the same path that you guys want to use to go to the sewer. Now, I understand that tomorrow they're tying the, the Blake into that sewer line. They've gotten the permits to do it. I did not, and me or my team, authorize those permits. However, I know they were authorized, and there's nothing I can pretty much do about it at this point. Because if it had been me, I would have never even closely remotely allowed it without some kind of uh, agreement between you guys and us on how we're going to work on getting this sewer to the plant. Now, I've been out to the plant. Um, actually, uh, Mr. McCarran inspired me to get my butt out there, and I have. Um, I think our plant's old. I think it needs a good bit of upgrade. Um, I think if it's running at optimal conditions with, 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 with low um, I and I, you know, infiltrain, rain infiltration through, through heavy rain events, I think our sewer plant can handle it. Um, but I can tell you what can't, and that's getting to it. Um, so we need to really work on that together, and, and, and I want to be on record. You want us to come on up, Mr. Buckle? Let's go. <clears throat> Tommy Buckle with the Planet Design Group. So, Mayor, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, and and so, I want you to understand what we have done before your administration and the previous admi two administrations. Okay, um, this this issue about the sewer infrastructure has been something that we have talked about ad nauseum, and we have the, the developers <laughs> under the previous administration's guidance spent $200,000 on a brand new sewer lift station and agreed to extend 1,100 foot force main to the location that the previous administration's engineers told us to go to to bypass a bunch of issues. And we agreed to it. These guys agreed to it. We went and permitted it and got it approved. The new administration comes in, your administration comes in, your new engineers come in. They tell us that they want us to tie in at this location. So we make modifications to tie in at a new location that was all agreed upon as of three months ago. And as of tomorrow, these guys are going out there and this is brought to our attention. I mean, I'm gonna make a phone call to the contractor at eight o'clock at night, but I mean, this is, <laughs> I can't. Well, I don't know why I mean, it's been brought to your attention because I've brought it to uh, Capella's attention, McCarran's attention several times in the past months and, uh, and okay. even offered to, to walk these sinkholes with them. And so, you know, and I understand that this is not a, a, a colonial problem, right. but if we're going to work together on this, this is a together problem. We, we're, 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 I, 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 I speak for the, the developers themselves and the fact that they have put their money where their mouth is as it relates to incurring additional costs to go whatever lengths the city has asked them to go to to this point. Well, I, appreciate I mean, there is, a, there, is a, there is a point that, you know, 
there's a there's a there's a point that is that you can't handle everything. But they have tried. We have tried. We have worked again at nauseum. These guys have spent an exorbitant amount of time at this. So I hear you. Um, I, I'd like to learn more about this after this meeting tonight. Um, sure. But so just so you know my history with this, at one point I was the only voice in favor of Colonial. Then it became the, the only of one of two voices in favor of Colonial. As a mayor, I'm in favor of Colonial. Um, so I want you to understand that, that. And it would be, I feel, my neglect to you guys to not make sure you are not aware of this because it is a problem and it has gotten worse. And I'm, you know, and like I said, I believe it's an our problem, I do. And, and I'm sorry that if that comes off too harsh, but sure. you know, you have extenu like extenuating circumstances like the river coming up at 19 feet. You know, the river comes up 19 feet, juggles everything under the ground, drops back down. I think we had seven water mains break in the past two, three. I think we've had over a dozen water mains break since January. You know, and, and every, this ground is, is such a mess, and I don't want to see you guys. To me, I gotta be honest with you, I think this will define me how good or bad this, this, this development Understood. goes. Understood. And I need you to know that, hey, we need help. Right. You know, you guys are, you know, you're Jack Capella and, and, and John Georges and, and, and Mr. Suffering. You guys, if you can't pay for it, help us go get it. You know, I mean, we have me and Mr. Karen, Mr. Karen started talking at length. You know, I remember in the very beginning that the, uh, the ideal plan, and I, I know it was, I said that wrong, that we were gonna put a sewer plant in your, on your property to maintain your sewer. We went and did some homework, 1.1, you know, actually would, to put a sewer plant on your property is cheaper than what I'm asking for you to help me with. 1.1 million dollar package plant. We need a mini pump back there. We, we absolutely, I've actually talked to Mr. McCarran, he said he'd all be able, why, you know, let's, we're not at, we, we're asking for help. We, 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 all of us want this to be a, a plus 100, you know? But I know you've been awesome to work with Mr. Buck. I'm gonna tell you that he has been incredible. Thank you so much. Mr. Suffern, you, you mentioned um, putting requirements on the future homeowners through an HOA. And I don't have your knowledge and experience, and I have limited understanding of an HOA. But anything that the, if the developers created an HOA, in the future, the rules of an HOA and the, the, the liabilities they assume can be changed by a vote of the HOA homeowners, can they not? They could be changed. Uh, typically, you have to have 100% of agreement. And to get homeowners, 100% of them to agree to anything, But, but it would be unlikely. easier to get 100% agreement if somebody said, I'm going to cut your annual cost by $1,000. Most people would vote for that. So I don't take a lot of, I'm not confident that things put into an HOA today will be the same things that exist a year or two or five from now because in the, the homeowners can change it. Leg legally, that could happen. Let me speak to this for one minute, though. I, I want to be clear that the that uh, I'm going to bring it back to the eight lots. Okay, I'm going to bring it all the way back to the eight lots. We agree to put some uh, restrictions in place on those eight lots, not the HOA. Okay, uh, yeah, let, let's let's I be understand. clear because we're talking about the HOA. We, I'm talking about eight lots, man. I'm talking about eight lots. <clears throat> At some point, this city said, uh, can you not make this commercial? Can you make it residential? Yep. What's the minimum size? 75 width. We gave you 78. What's the minimum We're talking about eight lots. We will put some restrictions in, but we're talking about an HOA now. Throw it away. Let's get back to these eight lots if we can. Well, let, me, let me make a point to your eight lots. I sat in a meeting with, with your partner, Mr. Cody, and I wasn't, I wasn't the only one there. Yes, sir. And when we talked about this stub, this Extra. Extra 50 something feet. Mr. Ducote said he wanted it because it evens out the lots that he wants to build on Colonial. Th that, is, that is correct. Uh, I was so, hoping you were going to ask me that earlier. That yeah. lot literally stops. So it allows us, to, we are going to ask to go in front of the, uh, the retainage pond. And that lot stops in such a way that allows us to continue and leave a servitude accessing that. Now you can deny that. You, you can <coughs> deny that. This is what we're asking for today. That is, but yes, yes, sir. That is exactly. I was hoping you was gonna ask me earlier. I thought maybe for some reason you wouldn't. <laughs> it stops short. You can continue to do the 78 foot. You add, it's either a five or 10 foot servitude, and you'll end at that last one. That that's the intention. Um, but that's not what I'm asking for. 
We're asking for eight lots. Hmm. That's it. Hmm. Now, to go along with this, I, I was involved with the past administration. We, we've discussed this over and over and over and over again. We finally came to this conclusion to move the residential over there, add the commercial in the back. Um, so uh, I, I know that's the next ordinance, but just getting to this ordinance, uh, it, it was with the knowledge of knowing that y'all were going to come and ask for lots. I understand that the, that we have issues with sewer drainage, uh, so I don't mind deferring it if that's the way they want to go. But we knew since we discussed this, what, about a year or two ago, that y'all were going to come up and, and try and get these lots. So, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I understand if they want to defer. Just because I don't think it's been stated, maybe I'm a statement obvious, that sewer and drainage is in place. We already paid for it. It's there. Just to be clear, we're not trying to solve something. It's solved. It's, it's running along the back. There it is. Matter of fact, you drive past, you'll see it's stubbed up. It's there. It's in place. And I understand that, you know, still in zoning, too. I don't want to. Uh, I get it. I, know I get it. The only thing I'm trying to do here, guys, uh, go, man, you got you to gotta tell me to sit down because I'll go on all night. Cause <laughs> I'm just trying to move it forward. That's all. I'm just trying to get it off center. Right. I'm trying to take the first right. step forward. Yeah. That's it. Step forward. Eight lots. That's it. And um, that's it. I feel like I feel like without motion, right. things stall. Right. Uh, the sir, things stall. They sir, don't intend to stop, but they stop. Mr. Capella told me twice that that eight lots would extend the full length of lot C. And he's not here tonight. He yeah, told me he's, that. He's here. Oh, I'm sorry. He's here. Hello, Jack. He told me that day before yesterday. And he told me that at the planning and zoning meeting last week. And he told me that before that in another conversation. So my expectation was is that the developers would do what the developers said. Now, so there's some miscommunication. I'll just. No, no, I, I believe. That. I believe if I'm understanding correctly, what you're saying is that Mr. Capella said that these lots are going to extend to here? No, that no. the no, no. eight lots would extend oh, to the old boundary sorry. of lot C. Lot three. Lot three. Lot three. three. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, um, so there's, a, there's a huge miscommunication. It, it took place. Um, it took place more than once. Um, and and uh, again, well, the motive, the motive is one that concerns me. Mm -hmm. There's an implicit intention by you guys to do something you have no authority to do. We're trying to, we're trying to amend a development agreement to get to what's going to take place other than lot three. But that, those discussions haven't uh, borne much fruit yet. Hopefully they will soon. I understand your sense of urgency. I want to repeat something that was said by some other councilman. I know that this property is going to be developed. I'm not opposed to it being developed. It's just got to be developed in a manner that is beneficial to the city and the developers. And I think that will happen. This, this coming in front of us today, me today, after these conversations, is not what was discussed. And it, and it, it just doesn't sit right, sir. Uh, I, I have so what wasn't discussed? The, that the eight lots were going to extend to the boundary line of lot three. It, the eight lots. So were I can't extend. speak to what you were told, but I believe you if you're saying yeah. that. But I can tell you this: this is what's been submitted. This is what I'm saying. It is. I don't know what else to do. Well, I, I'm I here. I'm saying. I'm saying to prove this, uh, regardless of what somebody else on the team told. Somebody I'll may have said that and, and yeah. misspoke. But and and I'll say um, that I was told the same thing twice. I understand it tonight and understanding the, the intention that it's just going to be part of A to B unless we do something else with it. Um, I'm willing to approve it, right. but for we're waiting on a recommendation for planning and zoning. And I have to respect that commission and, and, and otherwise, what's the point of having a planning and zoning commission in this city if we're not going to wait for them to at least send us a recommendation? And I, I think we prepared, we're prepared to move forward with some stuff tonight. I don't think we prepared to move forward with this. But I believe over the next two weeks, prior to the next planning and zoning meeting, I believe Mr. Jackson, get there. McCarran, Capella, I think we can get there. We can get there. So if I already put a motion to defer this. Second. And I, I, I'm not trying to shut you down. I am trying to move you forward. I just want to make sure we're all prepared and we cover everybody's bases. I've been working on this project, if I want to say it's probably six or seven years now. 
if this project would have been done the way I thought it should have been done on day one, we would had a full developmental plan, everything would have been agreed upon prior to the front going commercial, I would have voted for the commercial up front, which I did not. And the only reason I didn't is because I didn't want to deal with these headaches later. But I think we're getting close, and I think we'll be able to have this resolved soon. But in the same note, I sat here six or seven years ago, and we had people in here projecting we'd have a million dollars a year, $700,000 to a million dollars a year. That's seven, seven, seven million dollars. This project hasn't really brought in any money to the city. Um, I know the economics have changed, things have changed, and we're prepared to change and work with you. This property has to, something has to happen. And y'all are trying to do something. I applaud y'all for doing something. I applaud you for stepping up. And I believe we're gonna get this approved. I just wanna make sure we follow the proper channels, get everything put in place that needs to be. Let this go back to planning and zoning and we move forward on it next month. Fair enough. Right. We have a motion on the floor by Councilman Chatelaine and a second by Councilman Asville to defer. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five Yay. 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 Zero nays. 2019-26 is deferred to the next council meeting. Madam Clerk. All right, proposed ordinance number 2019-27. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Chatelaine and seconded by Councilman. I'll take it. I'll take it. Johnston. An ordinance approving the rezoning of lots one through eight, Colonial Place, phase one, and portion of A2B1, Sony Adder Chapatula's Plantation, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, as per plan made by Ronald Clement, dated July 24, 2019 and further approving the rezoning of a portion of Lot 6A, Colonial Center, Sony at a Chapatulas, Chapatulas Plantation, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, as per plan made by Ronald Clement, dated July 24, 2019. Okay, do I have a motion open for public hearing? Motion. Motion Move. by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Asville. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. yeah. zero nays. Public hearing is now open. Anyone like to come speak? Please come speak. Judy Johns. It doesn't say what you're re rezoning it to. So what are we rezoning lots one through eight? That's going to residential, but what are we rezoning portion A to B one? To what? That's taking that commercial that we take into residential and moving it. So this is all gonna be residential? The right. one through eight is residential. I'm sorry? The one through eight is residential. The agreement we made and port, what was to move I'm that residential the to portion. the back uh, of the property? The, other, the Resident portion of A to B, part of it's going to be residential, part of it's going to be changed into commercial on right. lots, future lot 6A. Correct. Because they, they, the previous council agreed that whatever the, they would give them the offset on the other yeah, side of the commercial. To the buffer zone so with the houses, more we, commercial. we are creating. No, no, it's, 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 the, it's same, the same, it's amount the same of offset. We're it's taking, just moving. We're taking 2.42 acres of commercial off of Colonial Club Drive and moving it's it to the there. interior of the property. Correct. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mr. Suffren? Okay. Yes, Edward Suffren, attorney for uh, JW Colonial Group, the developer. This is really a tandem ordinance with the resubdivision. We really need to address both of these at the same time. Because the uh, earlier ordinance was deferred, uh, my recommendation to the client is we defer zoning too. Well, you would think that you would have to make a residential before you vote to split the lots into residential, correct? I really envisioned it at the same time. That's why we filed the two ordinances uh, and the I two applications together. Okay. okay. I'll say that um, you wanna if, if we're going to defer it, I, I'm prepared to make amendments to it tonight so that we can get it to the residential if we want to do that. If we're going to defer it, when it comes back in November, um, we're just going to amend the agenda a little bit and do some rework and bring this up first because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to give you eight lots. Right. And then if absolutely zoned. if it's not zoned R1 absolutely. and then you have eight commercial lots, if that makes sense. It does. Okay. And that would be so procedurally what proper. What right. if, so what if we move with the rezoning? Can we close? We can. Public hearing? Well, That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. We well, I understood that for the rezoning tonight, 
you wanted to rezone just the residential and not the commercial piece? Well, yeah, because we can't rezone the commercial piece because the whole lot doesn't exist yet. We'll commit. We'll commit the same square footage. We'll commit the same square footage on the interior, but we can't. We can't add it to a lot because that six A doesn't exist. I really can't recommend that we proceed in that fashion to my client. The understanding was that this was really together. We're going to create uh, residential along Colonial, move it to commercial, just to be fair to the developer. But at the same time, the understanding was we'd be able to have lots to sell. We really need to do everything together. We really don't achieve mm -hmm. anything right. if we for wanted the to developer. Get, you okay. have to get the zoning before you can right. create the lots. Yes, ma'am. If y'all want to defer, that's fine. But I'm going to make sure the next meeting that we pull this one ahead of the other meetings. I mean, ahead of the other so, one. Yeah, so it's just, the yeah, it's just a minute. So you recommend us, I, you as the client would recommend us to defer this instead of amend agenda, instead of amended? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm we need to I would, be doing that the same meeting. Yeah. I would. Um, we have to close. Move to close the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Mo we have a motion by Councilman second. Asbel, second by Councilman Johnson to close public hearing. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. yeah, zero nays. Public hearing is now closed. Council discussion. Council discussion. My recommendation um, for us would be to go ahead and, and lock down lot three as R one A. Amend this. Amend this to lock down R one three. R uh, lot three as R one A. And, and promise them the, the future offset into six, um, future right. lot 6A. I agree with you. Um, and that, that would be my recommendation. And I'm prepared to make that amendment, but if there's a vote to do. You may want to do a recess and discuss it with them. No, I've, I've discussed it with Mr. Capella. Oh. I'm prepared to do this, but in the same note, I want yeah, I mean, I'd like the client to, client to agree prior to us doing it. Can I issue special privilege to the client yes, to come up and talk? Okay. Again, I would just reiterate on behalf of JW Colonial, would prefer to have it deferred because I think the whole concept was create the residential, create the commercial. And I think we're at a disadvantage if you're only doing the residential tonight. We're, com we're committing the commercial I, I would, to I, you. I would disagree, right. with Mr. Severn. I right. think we're at, a, we're at a disadvantage on leaving that property commercial tonight. Right. If you want to make amendments, so, I'm... Uh, that's, that's, I think that's that call. <laughs> I'll move to amend the ordinance. I have a motion by Councilman Asbill to Second. amend ordinance 2019-27. All in favor? Yeah. So we have a second by second. Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Five days, yeah. zero nays. Was it Councilman Asbel? Bear with me here. Madam Clerk, you have a copy. I'm just going to go ahead and read them into the record. Yes, sir. Uh, we're changing any reference, and I'll just go ahead and say this. We're changing in, any reference to lots one through eight. We're changing the, those references to lot three. Changing any references to lot A-2B-1 to just A-2B. We're adding in the title line, goodness gracious, I need to line this up. Okay, we'll just, I'll read it as, as, as revised. Yeah, read it as amended. Read it as amended. Uh, an ordinance approving with the rezoning of lots, of lot three, Colonial Place, phase one, and portion of A2B-1, Sonyat or Chapatua's plant plantation A2B, Sonyat or Chapatula's Plantation, City of Harry and Parish of Jefferson State of Louisiana, as per plan made by Ronald Clement PLS, dated July 24th, 2019, and further approving a future offset of commercial within lot A2B, Colonial Center, Sonyat or Chapatula's Plantation, City of Harry and Parish of Jefferson State of Louisiana, as per plan made by Ronald Clement PLS, dated July 24th, 2019. Whereas JW Colonial Group, LLC, the owner of Lot 3, Colonial Place, Phase 1, and portion of A2B, Sonia or Chapatua's Plantation, City of Harriham, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, having petitioned this governed body to rezone Lot 3, Colonial Place, Phase 1, and portion of A2B, Sonia or Chapatua's Plantation, from C1, Neighborhood Commercial District, to Lot R1A, Single Family Residential District, as reflected on the plan by Ronald Clement PLS. Section 2, or excuse me, whereas, is that the same thing? Yes, yep. 
Removing second whereas statement. Removing lines 20 through, through 24. 24. Whereas on, what was the date of the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meeting? October 6th. No, last month. The last oh, month. Oh, October 2nd. Whereas on October 2nd, 2019, the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Harahan deferred said rezoning as indicated thereon. Now, therefore, be ordained by the mayor and city council of the city of Harahan that proposed section one, the proposed rezoning of lot three, Colonial Place, phase one, and a future offset portion of lot A2B, Sonia or Chapatuas Plantation, city of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, state of Louisiana, from C1 neighborhood commercial district to R1A single family district, as reflected on the plan by Ronald Clement PLS, dated July 24th, 2019, B, and the same is hereby approved. Section two, the future offset on a portion of current lot A to B from R1A, single family residential district to C1 neighborhood commercial district, totaling 105,466.9 square feet. Section three, the mayor of the city of Heron is authorized to empowered to affix this signature to the zoning map of the city of Heron to execute any and all documents necessary to fully implement this ordinance. The severability of this and repeal clause as referenced in ordinance number 1566 is incorporated into this ordinance. I think we have to motion for public hearing. <laughs> Move to public Wait, hearing right. on the amended well, we're still ordinance. on council discussion. We're still on well, council discussion. Well, there's, there's an amendment. Amendment. So, so we, we have to, to move to open the Correct. public hearing on the amendment, okay. and then we'll have a council okay. discussion on the amendment. All right. Motion by Councilman Asbill, second, second by Councilman Johnson to open for public hearing for the amendments to proposed ordinance 2019-27. No one, Anyone no. wish to come okay. speak on the amendment? Okay. Well, they all sit here. Uh, Edward Suffren on behalf of the owner developer. I just want to state an objection for the record that uh, I think, you know, we had applied for something rezoning, creating residential and commercial, and that was our application. Uh, so I seriously question whether the council can do this on its own change what our application applied for. So I just state that for the record. Okay. Pub motion to close public hearing. Motion. Motion by Councilman motion. Johnson, second by Councilman Asbill. Public hearing is now closed. Council discussion on the amendments. We'll ask the city attorney for an opinion on. Um... All right. We're going to, what if we take the amendments as you made them tonight? Vote on amendments, defer. Vote on amendments. Defer the vote. Well, if we're going to defer the vote, this is going to be back up in November. So just bring this as not, not amended. That's the point. So we, we bring this up. Um, I don't know. It, the, my point is, if, if we're going to defer the amendments tonight, the whole new ordinance could come back up in November with the resubdivision. So why not just wait until November if that's the deferral? I'd like to get this locked down as, as residential tonight. But if we have an opinion from the city attorney that he thinks it might be a problem, then I would say we, we just move to defer it. Even if in that, in the wording, we're giving them that commercial? Because we're still giving them the commercial. It's just not. No. He can't Make sure you're hear talk, you. Talking to Mike. He can't hear. Uh, talking to Mike. Go ahead, now you got to repeat all of that. <laughs> I think by amending it, you can vote for the amendment today, but it still needs to be deferred. The vote on the amendment, on the ordinance, on the ordinance, ordinance. On the ordinance needs to be deferred. That's what you're calling. Let's uh, let's amend it and so vote on amendment. I'd like to discuss this because let's discuss. It's, I've got questions. The reference in second line, well, line seven, we're, we're amending a portion of A2B. A2B. A2B, which is the larger portion, correct? Yes. But I don't think we amended it in here, did we? Is yes, it we amended said in at the very beginning that anything referred to A2B1 would just be considered A2B, because A2B1 doesn't exist yet. Did I give you a copy of the, the this? written amendments? I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, this? Yes, the marked yes. up one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I received it a few minutes ago. So 
now what are we what what are we amending with the, in this amended ordinance here jason councilman Asdo, i'm sorry what are we amending on a2b because it says that an ordinance approving the rezoning of lot three colonial place and a portion of a2b it, refer it references lot a2b1 a2b1 does not exist I know, but, but I understand that reference change. But the sentence says, in ordinance approving the rezoning of Lot 3, Colonial Place Phase 1, and portion of A2B. A2B is the offset on the interior. They're getting that. They're, that's, why, that's the rezoning. We're you're, committing that. You're asking about the rezoning of A2B? Yes, yes, sir. The rezoning of A2B is for the offset on the interior. No, but, but we're not rezoning. A two B. Right. Should, right. So I'm just. No, that there would be a portion of A two B that would be rezoned. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying that the, same the first point. sentence indicates that we're approving rezoning of A two B. And lot three. And lot three, but we're not rezoning A two B. There's a commitment. If that's if. It's a commitment. I mean, right. I'm just I'm reading it from the beginning. And that's just the title. So. It was a portion of A two B that is currently zoned R one A. We would take a portion of that A2B and attach it to lot swap. six to make up swap. the difference of the lot three that they gave us for the residential. Right, right. So, so, so uh, and from 40,000 feet, the, the plan submitted by the developer laid out the swap. It does, right. yes, sir, right there. So why are we not, if, if you're agreeing to the swap, why are we just not going with what because okay because the swap is to add um to change part of lot 6a from residential to commercial but lot 6a doesn't exist yet and we can't create lot, lot 6a in this ordinance lot 6a is part of the resubdivision ordinance this is the rezoning ordinance right that's why you're saying you want to right both but the ones. rezoning the rezoning that we are that i right. think we all understood and agree with and the fairness of, when you rezone the commercial lot three to residential, mm -hmm. they get an equal amount of property, other residential property Correct. zoned to commercial. Right. Correct. And we're agreeing, I think we're all on the same yes. page. Yes. And, we're, and we're agreeing to give that to them. But, Correct. but you're not giving them what they asked for. We can't right now. We can't because it's not rezoned. The lot doesn't exist. Right. That's why a they just said a future, a exist. it's like a portion of the well, lot. Yeah, and that's why that should all be in this ordinance. And the same thing, this property right here yeah. is commercial. Right. But this is but changing it, was, it from commercial. But it was committed to residential. Right. Right, but it, but it is commercial, and this ordinance changes that to residential. eight lots plus a piece Correct. To, Correct. to residential. And it was okay to go on a commitment a couple of years ago, but the commitment isn't going to work today. I, I'm fine with commitment. I, I just sit right here and I look at my. Uh, and, uh, excuse me, guys. I, I'm fine with the commitment too, but I'm just trying to understand what this amended ordinance does. Um, so, if the ordinance were complete, let me say, it would also create lot. What is the lot that would be created? Six, six A. Six not A. So why are we not creating that? You can't because that's not that's in the that's resub a resubdivision. You can't, can't do break a resub that and a rezone in the same ordinance. Right. We can't do we half shouldn't. of one ordinance. We deferred the resub ordinance. We're talking about the rezoning now. Six A doesn't exist. Eventually, it will, just like lots one through A will eventually exist if it passed that it was existing lot three. Currently, lot three, I should say. I think my, 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 um, um, my other comment is it scares me when you do an order <coughs> of magnitude of this size on a piece of paper in a 10 minute breakout. I'm just concerned that it's moving too fast. The only thing that concerns me also is if we defer this <coughs> until next month and we pull this up before the other ordinance so we can do <coughs> this, we're going to run the same problem because we can't vote on this and this and then I don't want to vote on this without this. So. It's we go around the same problem because we're going to have to word it this way for at least point, point, point for at least order. another ordinance. I think Mr. Media wanted to talk too. So uh, one, one question, City Attorney. 
could not these two ordinances be combined in one? I think it's better to have them separate. But, I do. It, but it creates the chicken right. and the egg right. problem. It does. It's better to, to have re rezoning and resubdivision in two separate. Right. But as y'all discussed, y'all going to do the resub before the rezoning. Right. And that, so. that's the issue is that even if we want to bring up this rezoning before the resub, we're going to word it the same way with the future offset because it doesn't exist until the next vote, which would be the resubdivision. Correct. Okay, so, so I sat right here and I so did the, the resubdivision. Same issue. Same issue. Right. I don't I don't think they would do this, but if I sat here and I did the resubdivision and resubdivided the lots, and we sat right here and we had this discussion, and a client comes up and says, I don't want to do the, re, the rezoning now. Right. Then what'd you do? You already did the resubdivision. Right. Well, the other, the other thing is, if Mr. Suffren is say, saying we should take up both of these at the same time, and I'm assuming if one passes, we pass the other as a council. Then you have the mayor so veto it. So once we, once, we, once we pass any one of the two, we move right on to passing the other. Right. So I think it's in our control. The, client, the, the, the developer really can't withdraw anything. Right. It's, sure. it's, it's but a, the part that we, we part that concerns me is, is what I was just talking about. You're yes, up here right now. The part I, that concerns me. Do you have me. a legal solution for this? Defer everything. Uh, you could take up subdivision first the next time, but condition its effectiveness on approval of the rezoning. So subdivision is not effective unless right. rezoning happens. Or vice versa. There you go. Right. Conditional. Okay. Yes. Sir. Do the rezoning and condition yeah. on the resub. Vice versa. Okay. That's what the client wants. That's what I'll do. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Media, did you want to speak? I know you asked for foreign personal privilege. Would you like to speak? Uh, okay. So, what, what, what we have to do? We have to vote on amendments first, and then we defer to a regular ordinance. Is that what we do? Are we going to defer the amendments any ordinance? I would draw the amendments, defer the ordinance. Draw the amendments. Okay. okay. So, amendments. I would draw the amendments and move to defer the ordinance. Okay. So we have a um, second. Good night. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor to defer Ordinance 20-19-27 by Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five years, zero nays. Ordinance is deferred. Real quick, Mayor, and, and again, for the public, all of that, for my purpose, was to lock down Lot 3 as residential. Right now it's commercial, restricted to residential, but we know what commercial restricted to residential means. And I wanted to change it to R1A so we don't have that problem. Correct. And, 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 and I'd like to comment, every council member up here and the mayor shares the concerns of Councilman Asbill and we want to get this done as soon as possible. All right, moving on. All right. All right, ordinance, ordinance is for introduction. Proposed ordinance number 2019-29. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Chatelaine, an ordinance to rena rename Hebe Lane, Pontic Lane. Proposed ordinance number 2019-31. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asbill, an ordinance Madam amending- Clerk, you have 2019-30 um, for Randolph. Oops, sorry. What's that? Proposed ordinance number 2019-30. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Wheeler. An ordinance approving the resubdivision of 563 Randolph Avenue, Lot 7, Square 7, Royland Subdivision, City of Harriman, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Gilbert Kelly and Couture Incorporated, dated August 29, 2019, and 573 Randolph Avenue, Lot 8, Square 7, Royland Subdivision, City of Harriman, Par Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, Made by Gilbert Kelly and Katori, dated August 29, 2019. And proposed ordinance number 2019 31. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asville. An ordinance amending the Harrahan Code of Ordinances by the addition of Chapter 19, Harrahan Regulatory Court, and related regulations and bylaws. And there's no old business. New business number one. Request for permission to sell beer and wine at the Har Harahan Athletic Association Jambalaya Cook-Off on Saturday, November 16th from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. 
Okay, do I have a motion open for public hearing? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. Would anyone like, one like to come speak on new business item number one? No one coming forth to speak. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Um, anyone like to comment? No comment. Um, no comment being put out there. Would I have a motion? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. New business item number one is approved. All right, new business number two request to close Berg Street for the St. Rita Pecan Festival from. Wait, that's. All right, do I have yeah, a motion? Yeah, that's open right. For Hold on. Uh, from Friday. Motion. Motion. All right. Motion. Motion. Anyone like to come? Um, um, I'm sorry. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now open. No one coming to speak forth on this ordinance. Do I have a motion? I mean, this uh, new business. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Chatelaine. Um, do I, all in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public no, hearing is now open. Uh, we have four yeas, one abstention. Uh, um, we just close public. All right. Can we have a motion for the vote? Oh wait, I'm sorry. And that was just public yeah. hearing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, zero no, nays no, closed no, public no, hearing. Now we're gonna um, any discussion? No discussion. No discussion. <coughs> a motion to the vote. Yay. Abstain. Yay. Yay. Four yeas, one abstention. New business number two has passed. Madam Clerk number three. Todd Tunio and Finance Director, current budget update. Yeah. Good evening, Council, citizens. Uh, my name is Todd Tooney. I'm the Finance Director for the City. Just wanted to give a brief update to the uh, citizens and to the Council on the financial activities uh, of, the, of the City. So the City's annual budget for the General Fund is approximately $6.3 million. The majority of the revenues consist of property taxes, sales taxes, court fines, video poker funds, licenses, and miscellaneous revenue. The significant expense categories that the city incurs, salary and related benefits, which includes hospitalization, health insurance, as well as the retirement match for the police and fire departments, insurance, general liability, auto, professional fees, attorney, accounting, computer, engineering, utilities and office supplies, energy, telephones, cell phones, things like that. The city hall staff has been working closely with the finance team and active since January, working on the initial transition into the finance department, changing financial institutions, the completion of the 2018 financial statement audit, which has been issued, and now preparing for the 2019 budget amendments, the year-end closeout, and the 2020 budget process. The city has adjusted these statements through August 31st, and, uh, and we just wanted to give a, a few highlights of the activity through August. Uh, first, in the general fund, all, all of these next few items remain in the general fund. Um, sales tax receipts uh, are more than budget and higher than last year. Um, and we wanted just some confirmation of that. So we did speak with the tax collector, JPSO, uh, about two weeks ago, and they confirmed to us that they're seeing the same increase in activity that we are seeing here. Um, Video poker funds are higher than budget and higher than last year. Um, it's not all positive. Occupational licenses year to date are less than budget and prior year amounts. And we're working with, uh, with the regulatory department on, on that item as well. The majority of the, of, of the other revenue line items, property taxes, franchise fees, sanitation fees, miscellaneous revenue, generally are in line with the budgeted amounts. Um, so really kind of the $50,000 question is where do you think we'll be at the end of the year, right? <laughs> um, so we're working on an initial draft of the projected um, revenues and expenses for the remaining four month period through December 31st. With any estimate, it's certainly subject to change. Um, a lot can happen between today and December 31st. Um, but we currently are estimating that the city will meet budget. Uh, so the budget 
for the year in the general fund was a, a current year surplus of $48,000, and we're currently estimating that we'll meet or exceed that, that, that number for the 2019 year. One other observation on the general fund um, is the police millage funds of approximately 400 to 450,000 that came in the 2019 year are currently recorded in the general fund and, and our plan is to record those in a separate fund so that we can more clearly document what those funds are used for as well as document what balances of that property tax millage may be available for future years. Uh, so that's not in place today, but will be in place before December 31st. A couple other comments on some of the other funds that the city has. The city's capital project fund has had limited activity in, to, in 2019, and we, and we anticipate we'll have a fund balance of approximately 900,000 at December 31st. Obviously, that's subject to change based on activities of the next few weeks. Lastly, just a few brief comments on the sewer fund. Um, Mr. Buddy at the last meeting talked about the state of the sewer fund. While the sewer fund may be cash flow positive in 2019, actually we expect it to be cash flow positive in 2019, mostly due to the new millage um, in 2019. The sewer fund does still have a balance that it owes to the general fund of over $600,000, as Mr. Buddy highlighted uh, in, in last month's meeting. And that's in addition to the um, list of current repairs and maintenance projects that I know the mayor is aware of that are sorely needed in the sewer fund that are not paid or in place or funded at this point in time. So that's just a brief update on the financial activities of the city through the first eight months and where we might project the city to be at, de at December 31st and open to any, any questions that the council or comments that the council members may have. No comments, thank you. Just like to say a couple, three points that I'd like to make about um, this year and, and some promising things for next year. Um, actually, I believe Monday of next week, the LWCC rebate that we budgeted 60,000 for um, came in a little short at the beginning of the year. It came in at 36,000, but we just recently realized and through phone calls and from them that the, the, the since the economy has moved up and uh, due to other circumstances that that LWCC rebate check will now be coming in at an additional $100,000. Um, we're excited about it. They're excited about it. You know, we're going to make a big to do about it because that $100,000 is very important to our city. Um, health insurance, we, we worked with a, a, a new broker this year. Um, uh, health insurance, we came in with a much, much better policy than we had before, and we got it at a way, way cheaper rate. So health insurance actually tended to be a little bit over budgeted, and that helped our numbers out there at the end of the year. As well as one more promising thing, we'll be changing our bank, and we're in the process of doing it now, where we are, I believe we'll have paid seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 in fees, and that will go to zero next year. Um, and thank you, Gulf Coast Bank, on that. I know that I look for every little nook and cranny and every penny, and I think, you know, the pennies will add up at the end of the day, and I think, and I'm hoping, praying that, you know, 2020 will be a better year, and, and, and as I made the presentation to Colonial, you know, we have a really, really bad sewer infrastructure, and, and I do believe that these guys are willing to help, and, and, and that's pretty exciting to have a partner like them, and I hope that, you know, that there, there's concern on, on everybody's part, and we just want to make sure it's perfect. Thank you, Todd. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I have a quick point of personal privilege? Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, on the ordinance that I, that I put up for first reading tonight, can you add that to the website as a supplement so it's available to the public? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I would just like to state at the budget meeting that we had, we did announce that we were going to be bringing up some budget amendments for the October meeting, even though I said that may be subject to change. Um, we're hoping to get a new set of numbers so we can get a little bit closer to where we're going to be. So we will be pr presenting those amended, the budget amendments for first reading in November and to adopt them in December. Uh, we will also be prepared to adopt the 2020 budget also in December. So be on the lookout. We have to get the exact date. We will be calling for a special meeting for the budget for the 2020. We're going to get the dates and we'll be sure to share those with everyone too. Thank you, Todd. Next. 
Four. New business number four. A request to set out barricades on Magnolia Boulevard on October 31st from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. Okay, do I have a motion over for public hearing? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler. Would any like one like to come speak forth about the barricades? No one coming to speak forth. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by. Second, second by Councilman the Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Five yeas, zero nays. Public hearing is now oh, closed. Oh, oh, oh. Would you guys like to vote on these barricades? So they're just, we're getting a thumbs up. Everything's good. Everything's good. Thumbs up from the PD. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. They need a it, they're um, in the request. They're requesting a cop. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> so, so I, I, we just need to make sure they um, we clear that up. That they yeah, need she's to, got that email. Yeah, we need to make sure they pay. But we need to make sure they 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 know they have to pay for that cop <laughs> and donut. Okay. <laughs> do, I, do I have a motion to permit the barricades? Motion. Motion, motion by motion. Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. yeah. zero nays. Barricades are permitted with donuts. <laughs> Madam Clerk. All right, new business number five, a request for No Limits Play, second annual Trunk or Treat at Harahan Playground, Wednesday, October 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Okay, do I have a motion for a <coughs> No Limits Playground Trunk or Treat? Public hearing. I mean, open for public hearing. Motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second by? Second. Councilman Wheeler, all in favor? Yeah. yeah. Five yeas, zero nays, public hearing is now open. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Good evening, Jason Asbel, 573 Posey Avenue. Uh, no Limits Play, which is an organization dedicated to building an inclusive playground for boys and girls and people of all ages and abilities, is hosting a second annual trunk retreat on October 30th at Harahan Playground. Um, last year, this was a big event, it had a lot of people show up. I mean, it was packed. It was like Bourbon Street on Mardi Gras Day yeah. at the playground in the parking lot. It was cool. nuts. Um, so we're doing that again. Uh, we're looking for we're looking for trunk host. We're looking for sponsors and we're looking for people, for people to show up that night. We've coordinated, I think, a good effort with the police department on making sure everybody stays safe. Mm -hmm. And we hope to see you out there. And we're hoping to be able to use the playground for, um, you know, whatever it costs, I guess. Yeah, Not I'm for sure whatever it costs. Let's hope yeah. it's <laughs> low. I don't know. We're working on it. We're on it. Depends. <laughs> and I'm here for any questions if you need me. Okay, do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Motion, motion by Councilman second. Buddy, second by Councilman Chatteling. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Public hearing is now closed. Would you guys like to vote on this trunk or treat? Motion. 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 Right. All in favor? Yay. 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 Abstain. Five, uh, four yeas, uh, one abstention, zero nays. There was four yeas, one abstention from Jason Asbill, and zero nays. All right, address the council. Okay. okay, make a motion to open address the council. If anyone like to come forth to address the council, uh, please come forth. Are we gonna make, make a motion like this? Uh, no, I'm I'm okay. Okay. I motion. I motion by Councilman Buddy, second, second by. Second by. Second by Councilman Chatelaine. Address the council is now open. Hey. I'd like the mayor or the council to answer a question tonight. Why aren't the minutes of the council meeting or any city meetings printed in the newspaper? All other cities, and even Jefferson Parish Council, prints their minutes in a newspaper, but we don't. Why? I understand they are posted on the city's website, but I don't own a computer, and a lot of other people don't either. But I read the paper every day. Please answer my question. Do you all ever intend to put it on in a newspaper? because we'll be the only city that doesn't have it in the newspaper. Ms. Meiji, I, I don't read the newspaper. Well, I do. So I'm and not I'm sure, sure I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure if it's in the newspaper or not, but I'll check into it for you. I know you all don't put it in the paper. It hadn't been in the paper for the last two months. Has it ever been in the paper? Yeah. Harry? One time. One time. Yeah. One time. One time. That's in right. how many years? No. This in year. This administration. Okay. Uh, and my question is, Miss Judy, if you'd like to speak, come up to the podium after was the Miss Meiji. the meetings published in this in the Times Picayune newspaper every month for years. This is the first administration that's not putting it in a newspaper. <coughs> City of Gretna, West We Go, everybody, the parish, Kenna, they all have it in a newspaper, not Harahan. I think we should. Um, we'll, I think we should look into that as about? council. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. 
I need to show for Barrow. We got 188 with my one. I don't have. I can't get the picture from my a tab. I made several complaints to the um, code enforcement about 184 wood lawn. They've got bloodweed and vines that's on their property. I had this property cleaned up two years ago, <coughs> and they're not keeping it clean. I want to know why it's not being cleaned. What was your name again, I'm sorry? What's that? What's your name one more time, I'm sorry? Joseph Barbera. Joseph Barbera. So Thanks. just like Barbara, last name. Mr. Joseph, I will meet you out there sometime tomorrow, and then we'll take a look. You have to uh, say 5 o'clock, because i got a doctor's appointment uh, uh, to go to. Well, let me give you my card, and we will call whenever you're ready. I will come on out there. Okay. And I will make sure you're ready. <laughs> yes, because I, I, can't, I get, brought them the pictures. I can't get it to come up now. And um, I talked to him last Friday. He was supposed to, I guess he's just sending them letters. Nobody's going out there. Nothing's getting done. Well, we want to let you know that what we're doing now is, if, if you see, we're, we're putting a new code enforcement court and ordinances in place that Ms. Judy Johnson doesn't think that we need, but I think that we do. And this is for reasons why, because of exactly what you got right now. We have tons of concerns in the city, and, and we can cite them and give them all kind of stuff, but without bringing them to court, we, we really start to lose our teeth in the battle. So that's why we're bringing this court back in. And when we do come, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be very strict when this court comes in place. And we will start citing, and we will push it to the fullest okay. extent of the Make law. sure when you send her a subpoena that you put it under Kelly and not her mama's name, because I think the mama passed on. We'll make sure we get with you, and we'll get all the information. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You got it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. My name is Chase Turner, 85 Krizlar. It's great seeing y'all this evening. Y'all doing a great job. Um, I'm just here. I've, I've lived here for five years in Harahan, and uh, I build skate parks for a living out of concrete. And uh, I have children here now that I'm raising, and uh, I love Harahan. I live here, and I've built a couple skate parks in New Orleans, one in Chalmette at City Torres, skate, um, City Torres Park. And uh, I think that Harahan needs a skate park, and I'm willing to build it. And uh, I just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention that it would be a, you know, an, an asset to the, to the city and a, and a gem, you know. I mean, Harahan has everything that we need. We got, you know, all the great shopping and stuff. But there's no, there's no place really for people to want to travel here to bring their kids to, to you know, do anything. There's not, there's not, there's just a couple parks here, you know. But um, I think that you guys need to invest in the future and the kids. And a skate park is just one of many parks that that Harrahan needs, you know, we need some more parks and stuff for the kids to do. And so I'm coming at you guys to say that I'm willing to, you know, start the fundraising, you know, get open a 501c3 tax um, deductible account. And uh, I work for a construction company, so I'm willing to design, build, whatever, but I'd like to bring it to you guys' attention and find a location that we can build this skate park. And I, I know it takes years and years. I've been on the both sides of fundraising and you know promoting it and building it so I just want to come see you guys and bring it to your attention because I live here and I want to continue living here and I want to make this place better so I want to build a skate park for hair hands and can I can I ask one nice. question I have no clue what's a skate park cost it depends I mean the one in Chalmette that we built it was about 12,000 square feet and it's probably around the 100,000 that's easy which is that's pretty low, yeah. right. but I mean it's it's kind of a one time one time deal. That, that I mean you like pay for material <laughs> labor and yeah, you know it lasts fifty years or so. <coughs> or I mean, I mean kind of. Right. Have you taken a second to see what kind of grants are out there that can maybe support this? Yeah. Because they're all, I'm, I'm positive they got to be grants. I mean I think there's Tony Hawk grants and yeah there's all that grants stuff. and stuff. I, did. and uh, I mean I need to do some kind of groundwork to get it started, but I just want to bring it to your guys' attention and, and uh, just get to work on getting right. organized and starting a cool. design and mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of taking the first step and bring it to your guys' attention because right. I want to get you guys excited because it could be, a, you know, a, like I said, a gem for the city that could bring in people and, and money really to, to the city. Right. So yeah. Chase, I think, um, I think a couple of us will be in touch with you for sure because um, that, I mean, it's exciting to to have something new like right. that in the city that's nowhere else around here so yeah. right. you got it thank you Robert. Yeah, thank, thank you, you thank, thank you. you appreciate it
support it. Yeah. <laughs> there you Michael O'Brien lived at 152 Gordon Road and River Ridge. Um, I'd be honored to work for you as your next Jefferson Parish Councilman. Um, I've attended over the last uh, six years through three different administrations, dozens of council meetings, some that lasted nearly to midnight, un unfortunately. Um, but over the last four years, attending those council meetings, I've been to dozens of, of different charitable functions, civic association meetings, and whatnots throughout this city. Um, I've helped clean the playgrounds. I have family that live in this city. Um, I know the wants and needs of the representative, of, I'm sorry, of the residents of this city because I've been here. I did not just show up. I care about the future of Harahan. Like I said, I'm invested in the future of Harahan, and I would love to represent you guys as councilmen. Um, I'm looking to bring a smarter, more economically sound future to Jefferson Parish. I think that I have the education and business experience to help this administration bring in such things as skateboard parks, other different revenue sources, outside the box thinking that can help generate funds so that all these infrastructure issues that you guys have in the city can be fixed. And it's because of that education and that experience and that drive that just recently I've earned the endorsement, the support from Sheriff Joe Lepinto, Councilman, um, sorry, Senator-elect Kirk Talbert and Senator-elect Cameron Henry. And I ask you guys today, I would love to earn your support. I have a website at www.obrien, the number four, district two, the number two, dot com. If you have any questions over the next 27 days, I'd love to answer it. And again, I would love to earn your vote on November 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Johnson. And before you start taking my name in vain, would you let me speak for myself, Mr. Bodier? I didn't. You said it earlier, Ms. Johnson. When you walked up to the podium, you said you don't think we need a regulatory board. It was one of the first comments you made tonight. I have another problem for you. Please. The Planning and Zoning Board next meeting is supposed to be November 6th. Well, if it was going to be held, it should have been advertised in the paper today, and it's not. So I would suggest you change the date of the meeting and advertise it for next Wednesday because it has to be advertised three times. So if you want a re recommendation on the stuff from Colonial, they have to have a meeting. And as of right now, they can't have a meeting because they, they have not been advertised. It's set to be advertised Friday, 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 with the last Friday being November 1st to hold that meeting. So that's when you're going to advertise it for Fridays instead of Wednesdays? It's, I mean, that's. Madam Clerk, does it matter what day you advertise as long as it's three advertisements for, right. for three, three weeks? Three before? Okay. Weeks. It has well. to be three times. Historically, it's always been on a Wednesday because oh. the meeting is on a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to change it to okay. Friday, that's fine. I mean, it's just whatever works with the timeline, right. I think. It's, mm -hmm. it's right. So instead of. So yeah, it has, it was sent to the paper on uh, Monday to be yeah, advertised Friday. Friday, 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 Friday and Friday. Yes, so sir. the 18th, the 25th, and the 1st. Okay, yes, that's fine. And yeah, please, let me speak for myself, Mr. Bodier. You did. I was just repeating what you had said, Ms. Johnson. I was repeating you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, thank you for being on top of that and making sure it's good advertised Thanks. for the right days. Hey. Maurizio, Francesco on 239 West <coughs> Avenue. Um, I've been doing a lot of research. Actually, I've been doing it since about May of this year. Um, some stuff that I found out, just wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just read off some of my research that I've done on things that will help the city. Um, it's two packets. This one, and all this is available in public record. This is a FEMA mitigation grant, and then of um, it's a Jefferson adaptation strategy done by Jefferson Parish. So print these out, very lengthy, a lot of information, and I'll just read what these documents are. So if you just indulge me a little bit, uh, try to make it quick. The FEMA mitigation is based on based on the uh, Mason Ditch Drainage Improvements Hazard Mitigation Grant. Um, this is a, it was a 40 page, 46 page document and it addresses repeated flooding in a neighborhood of 57 homes in Jefferson, our neighbors to, the, to our uh, east. This is a two year project. Um, it's gonna start, they're gonna start building on this right now and hopefully it will benefit the residents of Jefferson Park. Again, this project, um, came to planning and execution, Congress appropriates twice a year money for hazard mitigation. Harahan can apply for the Harahan mitigation money even though the area is not declared a national disaster. 
improving the drainage set forth um, to improve the drainage on the south side of Jefferson Highway would fall under FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program. Um, all Harahan needs to do is apply for the FEMA and for the FEMA grant, and they'll they'll do it. Then the adaptation study done by Jefferson Parish. This was completed in 2019. This strategy is a guide for future development in 10, 25, and 50 year plan for the parish's economy, repeated flooding, and flood risk to already to the, to the parish that's already losing population. It's a 193 page report, it's pretty lengthy, talks about everything in Jefferson Parish, Kenner, and other cities. What I noticed in there is Harriham was not mentioned. Why I got left out, I don't know. But considering that we have probably one of the largest projects going on the, at Colonial, it probably should have been mentioned because it talks about Kenner and West Wego and all these other projects going on. Not sure. But I did a PRR request to Jefferson Parish. Um, it was a total of 1,800 pages of emails and correspondences on both of these projects. I've currently gone through about halfway through it because I wanted to find out, you know, parish council, parish president, who's all talking? Why, why weren't we, why wasn't Harry included? So I haven't gotten to the full, full, full. Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to add two minutes to Mr. Maurizio's time. Second. Second. So then, um, so that's another thing. Um, next was um, this. Every five years, FEMA does um, a reevaluation. Um, it's the FEMA uh, to a multi parish jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan. Now, Harahan was addressed in the 2014 report, which was published in 2015, where it talks about flooding issues in Harahan and, th and things like that that we can, um, that Jefferson Parish knows about. And of course, you can go through FEMA and apply for those grants. Um, and uh, some statistics that in 2014, there was 277 claims in Harahan, a total of $5 million in loss. So that averages about 18,000 per claim. That was in two, based on 2014. So what happened in the hazard mitigation is FEMA would pay for whatever. Instead of paying out $5 million to residents in Harahan, what if it cost $2 million to improve infrastructure, flooding, and stuff like that? FEMA would gladly pay for that than continuously pay out millions and millions of dollars to protect city property if you have flood insurance on city property, residents, things of that nature. So um, I was going to forward it to y'all, but I'm not quite finished everything. But there's like a little map, and it shows Jefferson Highway and all, all the flooding, the ponding that occurs, and what's zoned X and AE. So um, just some great information that I've been working on, and I was going to forward it to everyone, and also to my members on the zoning and planning if they want to read it. Just so, um, but um, then just a little side comment. Um, these are the facts. Um, I hope everyone would read my report and get involved with community and and get involved with your community. Instead of, instead of complaining on social media, on half-truths, do your research. Mm -hmm. Email or call your elected officials to tell them what you think. The major issues facing Harahan that needs to be addressed are flooding, our fire department, proper urban planning. Harahan is no longer a small city far out in Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish, the state of Louisiana, needs to review our area. Um, future developments like JW. Um, and look at it as a major contributor to our tax base. Urban areas grew up around us, so it's up to us to find the healthy balance of urban development and residential living. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do you have a motion to close the address to council? Motion. motion by Councilman Wheeler, second, second. by. Councilman Johnson, all in favor? Yeah, yeah. Five yeas, zero nays. Address the council is now closed. All right, Member. Secretary's report for September. Total revenue, $319,477.36. And reports. 
Chief. Okay. Stats for Harry and Police Department for September of 2019. We had 930 calls for service, 11 accidents reported, 244 citations issued for 293 different charges, seven patrol requests, eight narcotics arrests, number of narcotics charges were nine, there were two felonies, one misdemeanor, six city, other arrests in the city were 49, other charges totaled 80, there were six felonies, 54 misdemeanors, 17 city charges, and three traffic arrests. Persons and property crimes for last month, September. No murders, no rapes, no robberies, no residential burglaries, no non-residential burglaries, no attempted burglaries, one motor vehicle theft, three larceny thefts, 10 assaults, and that was another good month. The increase in the traffic citations, we've got two people now assigned primarily to traffic. One of the main complaints I've been receiving is people speeding and running stop signs, and we address it throughout the city. So drop carefully, drop safe. Hi. No. Uh, no, just everybody have a safe and happy Halloween. Councilman Asda? Oh, boy. Going out of order today. Councilman Gentling? No, no, I got, I got oh, some. I got some. No, no, I said, oh, boy, you're going out of order. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. You're on a spot like you throw me on a spot. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> so just one more time. Uh, no Limits Play Trunk or Treat, Wednesday, October 30th, 2019, 630 to 830 at Sonyat's. Har or Har Sonyat Playground in Harahan. We're going to have costumes, trick-or-treating, uh, trunk decorating contests, face painting, bounce houses, game booths, hot dogs, drinks, and snacks for sale. Um, if you're interested in signing up a trunk, you can email at nolimitsplayground at gmail.com, nolimitsplayground at gmail.com. I'll send you a form to sign up a trunk or for a sponsorship. Um, otherwise, we hope to see you out there and hope it's a great event. Uh, also, I don't know if anybody else is going to mention it, but we've got a couple of flu shot clinics coming up in the city. Uh, one is going to be here on Monday, um, accessible for the citizens. Um, is it Monday, it's got two different time slots. Check social media, check the website. But it's Monday, um, Pelican Outbound Patient Care is coming over to do flu shots. Um, it's free with most, most insurance. So if you got insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, stuff like that, come on over and get a free flu shot. Um, that's all I got. Other one I, I think that's just one important. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Councilman Guys, um, just to make y'all aware, Colonial Bowling Alley right here, they're the home of Tulane Bowling Team for the girls. The girls' Tulane Bowling, their home base is Colonial Bowling Alley right here in Harrahan. I believe it's a national tournament they're having here on October 18th to 20th. It is, and it's on TV. It's on TV. It's live streamed. Uh, I, I, I know we're not... Some people are going to probably see it on YouTube or something, you know, prior to this meeting, after this meeting, prior to this bowling tournament. But if you have a free time, you know, pass over there, check it out. I went last year. It's really nice. My son's on a bowling team at Brother Martin, and uh, they do a really good job. But this is the Tulane girls bowling. Um, Chuck and Gwen over at the bowling alley, they do a great job. You know, support our local people. This is something that it's not seen around here you know so if you have a free minute walk in check it out doesn't matter what the weather's like it's inside um it's it's a great sport <laughs> like i said it's inside my son said he's football or bowling he's big bowling i'm like all right cool we inside so let's move forward let's support these people who support us and see if we can help them out and give them a little recognition go see them thank y'all Councilman Buddy? Uh, no report, thank you. Councilman John? Uh, there's two things. First thing is, uh, actually this is going to air after the fact, so anybody here can spread the word. Uh, this Saturday at St. Rita, they're going to be having a trunk or treat. It's going to be from 6 to 9 p.m., $6 per child. Um, that's it on that, and also have a happy and, happy and safe Halloween. There you go. Okay, just as I re, um, said at the beginning of the council meeting, you know, keep everyone and in, in, in their families in prayers that have um, suffered from a loss from breast cancer, um, men and women, by the way, 
all, everyone is, is not immune to this. Um, you know, and then the families that are going through it right now, you know, please pray for them. I'm sure their, you know, their prayers would be, your prayers would be greatly appreciated to them. Um, you know, as, as the chief listens, uh, puts his stats out tonight, you know, zero this, zero that, zero this. Man, you know, I, I always just keep coming back to um, what a great community we live in. You know, and, and wow, what if we come together? How much better could we be? Uh, and, and I think we're, we have a lot to go there. So, you know, the growth potential for Harahan community-wise and relationship-wise between our neighbors and our, our friends is just, I think, limitless at this point. You know, and I think that's how we become a better community. We got, you know, we got a great school board member right here, you know, Mr. Billy North. We got the superintendent for the school board that lives actually in Harahan. Um, you know, we now we got, you know, some, some a, a new state senator and a new uh, state representative that's more than happy to help us. And um, and it's great. You know, I think we, we have so much room for potential. And, man, let's go see what we can do. I just want to wish everybody a, a happy Halloween and, you know, be safe and behave yourself. Um, thank you. Can, can I add one more thing? No. Yeah. <laughs> our, our city of New Orleans, they're going through an issue right now, which we hope and wish no one would ever go through. Our elected officials are making decisions, tough decisions. The search and rescue teams, you know, the people, the construction workers that are working on this project. You know, let's say extra prayer, you know, for these people and hope they make the, the best decisions they can, you know. And um, just think about them, you know, and it, it, it's a big thing that's going on. And pay attention, you know, and it's a shame it happened, you know. But they're going to get to the bottom of it and... Let's just hope they make the best decisions they can and everybody stays safe in the situations they're dealing with and just obey their rules, you know. I mean, you know, they're, they're asking people to stay away, stay out of certain areas, you know, and everybody wants to see what's going on, you know, so they want to drive down there, you know. Let's, uh, let's try to obey them and, and listen to what they're saying and try to follow the rules and just say extra pair for them, you know, hope they make the right decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Chair. Madam Clerk. All right, bills paid in September. $310,263.39. No executive session and adjourn. Motion. motion to adjourn. Move. Motion. motion by Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five yeas, zero nays. We are now adjourned.